update from the beginning. Today's guest is Jedediah Beal, a former <laughs> conservative co-host of uh, The View, which is a tough place to be and to be conservative. She's been all over, all over Fox, author, uh, new website coming up, Beela.locals.com, and she has a tendency of ruffling feathers. She likes to push the envelope. <laughs> so tell us, is that yeah. genetics? Is that you? Have you always been this way? Yeah. Well, I'm Italian, Got so it. you know that comes with the turf. But I, you know, I think pushing the envelope today means that you're just being honest with people. So I don't, you know, I don't tell a line for politicians. I don't tell a line for a political party. I really tell you what I think. I am a conservative, and I think I'm getting increasingly conservative as the days pass, to be perfectly honest. Um, libertarian, conservative. I hate these labels. It's like they don't mean anything. I'd I rather agree. just tell you what I think. But I'm not someone who's going to get 100% behind a politician and decide whoever this politician is, I'm going to support everything they say because I, you know, bow down to them. And I don't play that game. So I think what you get is honesty and that – Makes people mad sometimes, and that's perfectly fine with me. I'd rather give them the truth and have them be mad than lie to them and have them love me. So Yeah, it, what's crazy is that that's the ideal person to be on The View, right? To somebody like you. They like uh, – the other day I saw the article, the, the, the fact that they're having a hard time finding somebody to you know, replace a conservative co-host. But this person, the, the demos of this person has to be somebody that doesn't like Trump, believes January 6th was an insurrection – they have to be pro-vax. They have to be somebody, not pro-vax, they have to be somebody that's vaccinated. <laughs> they have to be somebody that is supporting Bill. Ba it's like so many different things mm -hmm. to say, this is what we're looking for. Why don't you just go out there and say, you're looking for a fifth Democrat to be there, right? Yeah, well, what they're actually looking for, in, in my opinion, is a conservative, and I have my little quotation marks, that fits a liberal's definition of what an acceptable conservative is. So they want to be able to say, well, we want someone who is going to go out there and we can say we have a conservative on the panel. Mm -hmm. We can use that yeah. word. But they're going to agree with us most of the time. And when they disagree, they're going to do it quietly. They're not going to ruffle feathers. And we're still going to get to be right. I believe that's called a unicorn. I don't know if those people even exist. Yeah. And, you know, I was I was talking to them um, again. I, you know, I had worked there for about a year and a half, a full year of contract and about a half a year of testing before that. And I was supposed to go on this year um, to co-host again. As you know, Megan left the show. I was supposed to go in October. And then um, I was all set to go. They came to my house. They accepted my medical exemption for the vaccine. They really? had someone come to my house. They COVID tested me. I tested negative. I got a call the next day. Oh, the policy has changed. You have to be vaccinated. I said, well, I'm, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not going to do it. I had COVID already. I have documented immunity going on 20, you know, 19 months at the time. Now it's more than that. Um, and I have an exemption from my doctor who's saying this is not right for me. So they said, you know what? Let's see what happens in November. I was supposed to go back and, and do the book. And November rolled around and they said, we're sorry. We can't have you. So the executive producer over there, who's, who's very nice, who I like, Brian, he's um, – generally good guy, as far as I know, he's been nice to me, said, we're going to take it remote. So I did a full pre-interview with them, full pre-interview where I talked about the mandates. I talked about how I felt about it. They wanted me to have that conversation. They well, grilled me. Did they me. prep you? Did they say, we're going to ask you? Was yes, a, okay, 100%. So you knew that was going to be out. Because she said, let's get the elephant out of, you know. Let's, yes, they yeah, said, yeah. no, they said, where do you well, stand? Them, they knew where I stood yeah. because I had been very vocal about not only the fact that I wasn't vaxxed, all over Twitter was me saying these mandates are not scientific. You cannot justify them. Here's why. So they knew where I stood. We did a full pre-interview. I get on the show. I open my mouth for two seconds and they say, oh, that's misinformation, which it wasn't. What I actually said on air was actually fact, which we now know because we're seeing it unfold in the country, exactly what I said, which was, and, and, and frankly, to cite the CDC, we can get into what I said, but... I think my point is, you know, they want, and this happens all the time in liberal media, they hire a conservative, supposed conservative, and then you listen and you're like, that's not a conservative, that's a liberal, or that's someone who's just going to be what you want them to be. That's not me. In case you haven't noticed in the, in the brief amount of time I'm here, I'm not malleable like that. So, um, But I, I don't think that's good TV, though. I, I don't think it's good TV to not be you or to not be Megan. Like, I thought both of you were a good fit. Mm -hmm. I thought it was... You know, uh, uh, that, 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 you know, going back and forth is what makes good TV. And that's yeah. what makes the audience to sit there and say, I agree with her. I don't agree with her. I agree with what she has to say. I, she's wrong. So uh, I don't know if it's good TV. I'm trying to see what the strategy really is. And I wonder if it helps with viewership long term. Because if it does, then you got to do what the viewership's working. And are there only five women on the show? Is that the number? Yes. 
And why wouldn't they, you know, because it's four liberals, one right. conservative, why wouldn't it be three and two? You ever thought about that? Like, why wouldn't it be oh, you and Megan? Like about the it. Supreme Court, they won majority. Yeah, what's the story with well, that? What it should really be is five women who see things differently as much as possible. So you could have a moderate Republican on there. Mm -hmm. You could then have a real conservative. I'm a have Rand Paul conservative. Have a Trump supporter on. Have a Anti -Trump, mix it a up rhino, so whatever. that, you know, people who have different ways of life, you know, have someone mm -hmm. on there who has a bunch of kids, someone on there who's single and doesn't mm -hmm. want to get married. You know, I think if it's about the view, mm -hmm. you know, it's called the view. Maybe it is the view as in one, you know, but if, if you're really looking to get perspectives out there of, different people around the country, then that's not what's happening, you know? And, and it is, listen, I don't know. I don't know if some of it has to do with pleasing advertisers. I had many conversations throughout this uh, past year because I wasn't going to get the vaccine. I heard from a lot of liberal um, liberals in production that were saying, you know, you could make the argument about the mandate, but if you were vaccinated, it would be easier because then you're like in the club. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what club is it exactly? I mean, like, wh why? And, and honestly, there's a bunch of people around the country who opted not to get it for medical reasons, for other reasons. So why is that viewpoint not valid to have that person represented, especially because we know the vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting or spreading the disease. So it's completely absurd that you By the way, what you're, what you're saying is a view. That, that, that's what CDC is saying. That's not what you're saying. The CDC even came out and said, even the vaccine, that's even correct. if you have it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like your opinion or something. Well, that's also, what was labeled yeah, misinformation, yeah. though. Yeah. I mean, I was shut down on national television for just simply saying the CDC has said that if you're vaccinated, you can also get and spread COVID. I mean, you don't have to be paying attention to the CDC to know that. Just look around. Yeah. Everyone I know right now who has COVID is vaxxed. That's not to say that unvaccinated people didn't get COVID all through last year. Of course they did. But that shouldn't be, you know, it's active discrimination against people, you know. And why are you not honoring medical exemptions? And why are you not accepting the reality that everyone has an individual medical history with a past with certain, you know, reactions they've had to X, Y, and Z. So, you know, th these are political talking points that are being. But the argument around. to that, to yeah. your point, is that if you are vaxxed mm -hmm. and you do get COVID, which I agree with you, I, mm -hmm. like, you were down in Miami. I was down in Miami for Art Basel. Everyone I know got COVID, literally everybody, like, boom, COVID bomb, vaxxed, non vaxxed, whatever. Correct. But the argument to that would be if you are vaxxed, It'll be less severe. It'll keep you out of the mm -hmm. hospital. It'll keep the hospital from going over capacity. What are your thoughts on that? So that doesn't justify a mandate, though, because if you're going to do that, talk to me about obesity. Talk to me about mm -hmm. smokers. Talk to me about people who drink too much. Talk to me about people who don't exercise. There are a whole bunch of, right. of lifestyle reasons that cause people to go into the hospital and burden mm -hmm. the hospital system. I'm, you know, I'm a healthy person. I exercise a lot. I'm very careful about what I eat. I had COVID. I was okay. Um, I haven't gotten it again. I've been exposed. Nothing has happened. I, I'm not a threat. Like to, to mm -hmm. assume that I am an immediate threat is absurd. And I think if you're gonna if you're gonna justify, if you're gonna utilize, you know, say, well, we need to justify this mandate based on transmission, you lose. If you're gonna say we need to justify this mandate based on what's happening in hospitals, mm -hmm. well, then you have a whole host of other issues that you better be looking at as well, because then your whole population essentially in this country is going to be affected in some way, yeah. because I'm going to get to say, really, well, I don't tax the hospital system, but somebody who's obese taxes the hospital system more, so what are you doing about them? Where does it end? And I think those stats on hospitalization and death, I think also, listen, that yes, there are some stats that show that that is absolutely true. You have some stats coming out of other places like the UK that show things a little bit differently in some studies. I think there are people that have benefited from the vaccine. I think there are people that got the vaccine and maybe they didn't get COVID or they got a milder case of COVID, but they got other stuff. I know a lot of people who have had some in my family, some of my friends who have had horrible side effects of this vaccine. Horrible. Truly, everything from myocarditis to blood clots. This is just a reality. Mm -hmm. This is a reality. It's a drug. Any drug has a list of side effects that are potential. Any drug. So, Fau By the way, again, YouTube, if you're listening, <laughs> Fauci has said that himself. In an interview, Fauci said, anytime we introduce a new vaccine, they come with side effects. And we make it yes. better as we test it. So this is not a claim this is what Fauci has said but so antibiotics so, too yeah. I mean this is not new yeah. this is not new antibiotics you can go I can go to the drugstore and take a Sudafed and get deathly ill from it so Sudafed yes I mean I've taken listen my mom yeah. and I it was interesting we both had a sinus infection a few years ago I remember we both took the same medication I got horribly sick I was hallucinating she was fine so you're not in the same body as someone else. So all I'm saying is, which should not be controversial to anyone, make your own decision. Talk to your doctor, yeah. talk to your family, talk to yourself. 
make your own decision. If that's controversial in the United States in 2022, I don't, I don't know what to say. I, I think what Adam's curious is the Sudafed that you were hallucinating. <laughs> he wants, he wants some of that. Uh, I'd like to have yeah. the Sudafed yeah. that yeah. you're having. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, stopped. Yeah. You yeah. stopped. You were like, wait, hold on a second. Because <laughs> I actually, I, so he made a note. When I he buy just, Sudafed, he did. He <laughs> well, the, did, the joke actually. of Sudafed is I used to do stand-up comedy. My dad thought Sudafed was like a wonder drug. Oh, you broke your arm? Take some Sudafed. Sudafed. Not a big deal. Yeah. Like headache? Take some Sudafed. Oh, you got AIDS? Eh, Sudafed. So not that I made, but. My question to you, sorry, is, yeah. is this your new fight? Meaning, mm -hmm. before COVID, you didn't talk about vaccines. I doubt that this was something that was on your radar, or was it? But is this your line in the sand? Like, this is what I stand for now. Yeah, I mean, I think my fight has always been freedom. You know, I came into this business battling the GOP establishment, really. I was battling Republicans. My issue was debt. My issue was like, why don't they care about the debt? You know, what specifically huge... Republicans or just politicians? Well, I in was general? mad because Republicans claimed to care the about the fiscal those conservatives. Right. right, a lot of Republicans were claiming yeah. to care about those things and weren't doing anything about mm -hmm. it. And I saw the rise of the Tea Party movement, and I know they've been vilified. But I went to a lot of those rallies, and a lot of it consisted of regular people who were tired of all of this nonsense. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, freedom has always been an issue that a hill that I'm willing to die. And I have never seen anything like this unfold in the United States of America. I saw what happened. I mean, I come from New York city. Mm -hmm. You can't go into a restaurant without showing a Vax card. This is the United States. So I have a two year old and I look at him and I'm like, you're not doing this to my kid. Like I will get out of here. I will take my money. Not that it's a lot, but I will take my money. I will take what I do for a living. I will get out of here and let these cities that are doing this to people, let them sink, mm -hmm. let them figure out that you can't act this way. So this is my hill to die on, not because it's you know, I, I'm not someone who's like, I'm an anti-vaxxer. You know, that's not my position. My position is, how are we now in a place in this country where someone can't make that decision for themselves yeah. and these pharmaceutical companies that have liability protection, why can't you ask about that? Mm -hmm. Why can't you ask questions and just say, hey, why is that the case? Or what are the side effects? Or, gee, you know, my risk assessment for me is not the same as the risk assessment for a 90-year-old with four comorbidities. These are not questions. These are questions you're getting censored for. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're are in trouble. Are your parents vaxxed? Let me they are. Let me ask they you are. background. So before Fox and View, what were you doing? I'm I was curious. teaching. Really? I was a, I was a teacher. I taught um, Spanish actually in schools for six or seven years. It's hard to remember Manhattan, exactly, but New in New York City, okay. in Staten Island, and in Manhattan, um, I was an academic dean, high school dean, and um, interesting went interestingly went through six flu seasons and never. A mask was mentioned, even though the flu is you? more dangerous to kids than COVID. But that's a side note. But yeah, you know, I, I taught in these schools. So when we talk about like woke curriculums and all of that, oh yeah, that's real. That's who, happening. Who were you in high school? If we were in high school to get a tenth grade, who's Jedediah? A nerd. Okay, like yeah. four nerd. point something GPA, valedictorian type of deal. I was the valedictorian in my college. <laughs> were you really? So, yeah, yeah. I went okay. to Wagner College on Staten Island. I got a four I literally, I just worked. I was, a, I was a, I was a, a bookworm. So I read a lot. Um, I was social too. I had a lot of friends. I don't know if the definition of a nerd, like what you're thinking of, I wasn't, you know, Ronald Miller in uh, Can't Buy Me Love. Do you guys know that movie? It's amazing, yes. by the way. I had a crush on him for the longest time. <laughs> I love you're nerds. You're dating yourself here. <laughs> I love nerds though, okay. like actual nerds, like but Peter when Parker. When did you, you break know? out of your shell? Because clearly you're not a nerd. Clearly you're yeah. vocal. Clearly you got a lot going on. So girl, college, but. I kind of discovered, you know, that I had a little bit more of a voice. I, you know, started dating. I started living. Um, Still was very academic, though. I, I, at the time, I thought I was going to get a PhD in Spanish literature. I was like, I want to be a professor. I love college campuses. This is where I'm going to go. Went to Columbia, got my master's, and was like, oh, I was wrong. Columbia? I don't know. Yeah. So at that time, were you a liberal? You're, what what nope. were you politically? I was a conservative. So your parents, are they conservatives? Uh, so, yes, my dad is very conservative. He's like a Ted Cruz kind of guy. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> my mom is a little bit more of a mixed bag. I think you'd, you know, I think she's more of like a Marco Rubio voter if I had to peg her as one. Um, but yeah, my, my family was very eclectic, though. My grandparents were Democrats. Um, a lot of family friends that we had in our house, you know, as family, you know, aunts that weren't really aunts, but were close friends of my mom and whatnot. Most of them were liberal. And I grew up in New York City. Yeah. So I was surrounded by liberalism. It just didn't make sense to me. Um, so yeah, I went to Columbia for, for a master's in Spanish literature and decided it wasn't for me, that I loved literature, but I, I went and worked for an insurance company for a while. Um, insurance company? Yeah, I do nothing about insurance. Really? I'm a terrible, I mean, really. Who like, are you with? What insurance insurance just oh, up. my, insurance. Zurich. 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 I was with Zurich, uh, but I did marketing for them. I got you. 
But I mean, I used to sell Zurich, so I remember Zurich. Yeah, I'm not good at that stuff. Like, if you're going to ask me about inflation, <laughs> no, have not. another guest on. You're but not good. I feel like you could be good at anything you do. So what weren't you good at? I mean, I'm not. On. I just don't have that kind of head. I'm more of a creative, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm a creative type. You know, I want to sit and write short stories all day long. Gotcha. Um, and essentially what happened was I worked in, I waited tables, I, you know, which was one of the most fun jobs I ever had in my life. And I made a lot of cash. So, you know, but tough on your feet, tough on I grew got some good guns though that I've kept from it's the you know obvious yeah, you can't really good. see them in here You're but you see it through the yeah but, yeah there it is I mean I'm just you gonna have to take my <laughs> hey but floated around for a little while um, went to L A thought I might want to do some acting chickened out was a big chicken about that shouldn't have been wish I had stayed came back really? yeah. wish you would have stayed wish I would have why because it's well, typically the other way around wish you would have no, stayed no I you know acting was something I loved I grew up in a house where my mom taught acting classes to kids. And out of my living room when um, when I was really little, she taught improvisation and I loved it. I genuinely loved it. I write about this in my book, Dear Hartley, a little bit, trying to encourage my kid to like, if you love something, go for it. Don't be a coward like me. But it was hard. And I was in L.A. I was with a friend and I just didn't have the right head. And I, I didn't give it my best shot. And I think if I would have stayed, I would have had at least a chance. Either I would have had a chance at success or I would have been able to say I gave it my all, which is always what you want out of life. And you want your kids to know that too. So Pat asked you who you were in high school, 10th grade. Yeah. So, you know, you kind of, you brought up the can. Like, so were you a Melrose Place girl, 90210? 90210. Okay, yeah. I saw oh. something with, with Luke Perry rolled up on you. Oh. Rest in peace. I loved him so much. Yeah. Yes, 90210, 100% all the way. I was a Brenda Dillon fan. Loved him. Got to meet him at The View I years later. Oh, my gosh. He was like... Your I husband still... was in the crowd. He was looking a little my furious. Husband, <laughs> my husband was... He was a little, a little jealous So I right wasn't there. married at the time. Yeah, I was and you were having him, second thoughts And my mom point. said to me that my... Now husband looked at her and said, should I, should I go up there? And she was like, Jeremy, it's live television. Like, what are you going to do up there? Was he going to knock out Cause Dylan McKay? Because I was like, I was very back you in were high Google school. You Gaga, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. obvious. But well, yeah, I was 10th grade. I was also ran track. I was, you know, I was social, but I'm not social now. This is the most social I get what's happening right now. But <laughs> Jedediah, were you feisty? Like, were you like, a, were you part of debate team? Were you part so, of like all of that or not really? I was quite, I, when I was really small, yeah. I never spoke. In fact, my first grade teacher called my mom and was like, it, is she okay? And she's really smart, but she doesn't speak. I was very shy, shy. and very yeah. afraid of all of that. By the time I got to high school, I had a teacher, a politics teacher, who I later found out was like a super liberal, but really encouraged us to, to speak out. And I kind of got my voice in that class. Um, and in college, kind of shifted away, did more of a literary journey. But I think that was where I kind of got my fire. Um, and, you know, years later, after I did the acting, came back to New York, taught for a little while. The whole, the whole political career started because I was writing on a blog that had like five viewers. I'm not kidding. At one point, it was like five people had seen my article. And one of the articles was reviewing Mark Levin's book. And my friend sent it to him and he read it on air. And... A couple of months later, like Sean Hannity's people called me and were like, does she want to come on the panel? And my mom fainted because my mom <laughs> loves him to this day. Hannity. Hannity. And I, there I was, this school teacher who didn't have a journalism degree, who was a regular girl just speaking my mind, sitting on a panel and two weeks later filling in for Dana Perino in a segment with Stuart Varney. And I was like, I, wow. I'm not really sure how... I think there was just a hunger for a regular voice at that time. Well, if Ron Paul said the best thing. Ron Paul said when he was doing what he was doing full time as a doctor, he started going and hearing an a economist speak. Mm -hmm. He says, when I left, every time he recommended a book, I'd go back and read the book. I'd go back and read it. And I, so I got obsessed. He says, so I kept going back every time he was giving a speech. He said, eventually, I went up to the guy. I said, listen, I can't help myself. I'm addicted to this content. This just makes a lot of sense. Liberty, freedom, all this mm -hmm. stuff. He says, this was never things I thought about. He says, what do I do with this passion? He says, don't worry about it. He says, keep talking about it. Keep writing about it. The right people will find you. Yeah. People found you. So was Fox found you first because the Mark Levin and then The View came in? How, how, did, yeah. how did View approach so you? So Fox found me first and I wound up doing a lot of free television, which is what happens in TV. Everyone sees that you're on TV and they're like, oh, you're a, a celebrity. Lighter. You're broke. I was broke. I had been on a teacher's salary before that. I don't come from money. I grew up in a very middle class family. My parents struggled to pay the mortgage. You know, I didn't have that. I didn't have any connections to the political world. Like my parents weren't in politics. Um, 
So I did a lot of free TV, and then I got my first contributor deal over at Fox after maybe a couple of years of doing free television. I did not only free TV at Fox. I was doing you know, CNBC. I was doing um, with Larry Kudlow at the time. I was doing MSNBC hits. Kudlow. I mean, that's yeah. serious financial yeah. conversations right there. No, I mean... Yes, but not mine. Mine were more like culture would do a panel mm. or but I would find myself in these places and be like, wow, I'm building a career, but broke. Nobody knows this. Maybe I should have told everyone, hey, make a donation. Fake but, it till you make it, girl. Fake exactly. It till you make it. Exactly. Yeah. And I got my first contributor deal. First contributor deal was small. I mean, you're, it's not money that you're making. But, you know, from there, I was due. I signed two deals with Fox that were for a contributor. And then the view came. And it's funny. I went to Roger Ailes at the time and I said, you know, the view wants me to come on and guest host. And he typically, Fox doesn't let you do any of that stuff. But he was like, well, I think it'll be really good for the network, you know, extra exposure. And you're not going to get the job. And no way. Yeah. Because I was so new. I was so green. And I was like, okay. You know, I knew I had a shot at the but job. But did you take that as a challenge? Or was it just kind of like, are you like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crush this one show when I get on. They're going to know I belong here. Well, once he gave me in writing the approval, I was like, wait till he sees what I do over there. <laughs> did he wait. become your, Pat talks about find your enemy to get motivated, right? Did, mm-hmm. did that become your enemy? Proving Roger Ailes, the legendary, great, you know, controversial yeah, Roger, is I that think your it was, enemy? Well, I think it was, he had launched this huge yeah. television network. And, you know, for a while I had been, I had been a contributor, but I wanted to fill in on shows. Like I wanted to host. And he was always like, you know, you have to earn your place to do that. And then here comes this network TV show that's like, we'll give her a chance. And he was like, oh, you don't, you know, almost like, She's too green. And I went, I got the job. Boom. So God, boom. I love it. I love <laughs> it when people are underestimated. So when you go, at what point did they just tell you right there, listen, we no. want to talk? No. So I they, had to test there too, okay. which I was fine to do got because it. I was employed. I had my Fox contract yeah. and I would show up yeah. with a view. I did a few months of testing um, with a bunch of people that were testing. I remember like um, Melissa Joan Hart was testing. I, I it was a, it was like a lot of celebrity at Hart the time. Is, yeah. yeah. What are they I asking you? I'm curious. Like when, when they're sitting there, they're interviewing you. What can, do they ask you? Like, so what do you think about this? What do you yes. is it that kind of a conversation? So I did an interview first with Candy Carter, who I really like. She's still at ABC. She's a nice. She's really nice, fun. Um, and I she asked me a zillion questions, like how do you feel about this and how do you feel about that? And they mm. wanted, you know, the claim was that they wanted diversity of thought on the panel and they wanted someone who was going to be tough to stand up to the other opinions so it was a very long interview and I left and I was like I don't know what happened like I don't know and then she was like all right we're going to put you on so they put me on oh it was long it was like I felt like I was in there for like a couple of hours honestly it it. was long and as you said it's a panel or it's just candy well it was just me and candy for the interview got it and then um I think I met with Candy. I think I met with Brian. Uh, I met with a few people, and they were like, okay, green light her. Let's put her on and see what she does. So I was this girl who had just a couple of years before that been writing for a blog with like five. What was the timeline? But but, but by the time Levin brought you on, you're on Hannity. A couple of years. Okay, so you'd put in some work. But you got got to realize, a couple of years is not a long time. People have to, this is very important for people that are listening to this. Look, you know, whatever situation you're in with your life, like sometimes, People like the part she talked about, she did so much free TV. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the part a lot of people don't want to do. You're going to have to work and get underpaid for a long time until you get your break. And she got a break. It's a beautiful story. That's exactly how capitalism works. That's exactly how your world works. That's how business works. We, you know, you, you pay the price and then they find you. And it goes back to Ron Paul's story. If you keep talking about what you believe in, they're eventually going to find you. You said Tea Party earlier. Was it like the whole Michelle Bachman era? Yeah. That era. I wasn't a huge Bachman fan. I came in, you'll hate this probably. I could just tell. I just can read people. Try because me. I Try no, me. I no, no, I guarantee it. Let's but see. I came Sarah. in being like a Sarah Palin yeah. fan. Um, and the reason I was a Sarah fan, now I know Sarah, so I know a little so you bit think more I about hate her. Sarah no, I just see okay. I see you as someone who probably I don't think she'd be your first choice, let's just say that. But and you know what? Not only me, 99% of America as yeah. well. So. But, you know, there's a reason for that because you've been told what you've been told about Sarah Palin and most of it's not true. But regardless, I got interested in Sarah Palin. I'll tell mm-hmm. you why. Because, first of all, she just kind of showed up out of nowhere. But I saw that... McCain the, plucked her out of nowhere because right. she I wasn't could a see McCain Russia fan. from her house. I wasn't a, she, does, she never said that. I wasn't, um, I wasn't a McCain fan. Look at us having the view <laughs> there battling you go. it out. She never said that, but... Um, Not that way anyway. But yeah, I wasn't a McCain fan, but I was like, who's this woman? And the only reason she was interesting to me was because media couldn't stand her from second one. And the Mm -hmm. take I saw the takedown and I said, okay, let me figure out. Maybe she's terrible. 
So I did a bunch of research on her work in Alaska um, as mayor and as governor. And I was like, okay, she's actually quite legit. And this is why they hate her. And she's also very personable. And so I became kind of um, interested in what she brought to the table. Um, and she also was a soccer mom. She, she felt like a regular person to me, which I really liked because I was a regular person in a business where everyone felt like you needed some degree. I don't have a journalism degree. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I didn't waste my time doing that. But, um, so Columbia <laughs> wasn't journalism. Columbia was Spanish uh, literature. Spanish literature. That's, that's why you taught yeah. that for many years. Yeah, I would. So we, after you met, you know how sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, she's so amazing. And then after you meet Sarah, was what you read and what you saw the same as the time you spent with Sarah? Sarah's just a regular person. She's just a mom. She is a well-intentioned political figure. She makes mistakes. She's not always the most articulate in expressing her ideas all the time. As as neither am I. Neither is anyone else. It's hard to be in the spotlight sometimes. She's um, she has a great record in Alaska. I know they destroyed her once she went back. Um, a lot of Oppo research. I mean, the media landed in Alaska. They were like, "We're going to land there. And we're going to figure out what's wrong with her." They were reading her emails line by line by line, which is interesting. They had no interest in Hillary Clinton's emails, but where she <laughs> can, lied can, repeatedly. Can, but can you imagine like you're, you're being told you're going to be working out of Alaska? Here's where you're going. That's your job. Wasilla, yeah. Alaska. Wasilla. Yeah. My question to you on Palin yeah. is: I actually completely understand why a regular girl, soccer yeah. mom, totally yeah. get that. As far as Vice President of the United States, mm -hmm. do you think she was a little over her in a little over her head? No, I th I think she had a really horrible team around her um, that didn't really support her, and I don't think she really understood. I think she understood establishment politics in Alaska. She was governor of Alaska, yeah, and she, she was wasn't dealing... like a little small no. city mayor, Pete Buttigieg, you know, South Bend, Indiana. That's true, and Pete Buttigieg has been glorified for that limited record That's that he true. has. That he he's did done fix at... a lot of potholes. So let's have a little respect. There you go. Took two months off. Pat was considering. Isn't that, something... That's interesting, though, because think about the way those two people were viewed. Yeah. One was glorified and covers of magazines, mm -hmm. and one was like, oh, she's not up to the job. She right. knew a lot about the establishment in Alaska because she was dealing with the Murkowskis and all that. But I don't know that she was prepared for the national stage and what that was going to look and that, like. And you think that was her team or the McCain I think it was the McCain platform. team. No, I okay. knew her yeah. team, Meg Stapleton and all them. But no, she, she yeah. But you, regardless, you, whether you love her or hate her, I mean, she was demonized from day. The woman didn't have a, a chance. But, but just think about anybody that's announced as a VP. Go any, go, go, and go think about what VP people were like. Oh, my gosh, this is fantastic. Uh, even Pence, when they said Pence, mm -hmm. did you know Pence? No. Did you know Governor who Pence of was? Did you sit there and say, oh, that's the right selection? Nobody's first pick was Pence. Nobody's second pick was Pence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So McCain, you know, like the whole conversation with Giuliani, what Giuliani ran on in the first time he ran for president, if he would have ran on that, and that was today, Giuliani's a president, mm -hmm. if Mayor Giuliani ran. So sometimes it's also timing. Uh, when you're the first person that's going to come out as you're the VP, you're a woman, mm -hmm. you're going out there. Chances are you're probably setting the tone for the next person that's going to go out there and win. It's not you. Like, right. you know how you think about Friendster, uh, uh, Facebook, before Facebook was what? MySpace, before MySpace was Friendster. Friendster what happened yeah. to Friendster? Yeah. Are you still on Friendster? Yeah. I, I, I send you friend requests. I haven't gotten it yet. What do you mean? I'm messing no, you I'm, all day. Oh, that I, might be a different Patrick than David. Yeah. That's MySpace. That's a different that's David than Patrick. Yeah, by the way, you know, you. Uh, so, so when you did get hired with The View, yeah. is it a contract of do they pay in the format of one episode is it a six-month contract is it a three-month contract what's the con agreement um so i'm trying to remember my contract i basically had a three-year contract but at the end of each year they had the opportunity they had to renew me got it so um and there you had a guarantee of a certain number of appearances i wasn't employed at ABC at large, I was employed by The View. Me personally. Megan may have had a different deal. How she might different have been. is that? Is that separate? Is, is yeah, because if you're employed, it's actually much safer to be employed by ABC at large because then if something goes wrong with The View, you can be utilized by That makes sense. It's a larger shows. corporation. I, I didn't fight yeah. for that because at the time, frankly, I don't think I had the credentials to fight for that. And secondly, I wasn't sure how it was going to go and I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So I was comfortable with the contract they gave me and rolling in. And Was and it seeing... decent pay? Was it? A... Yes. Okay, so the it pay was, was it decent. Was a, it was a raise, which was great. Yeah, I was like, yay! Says, it says a story. It was, That's it good. Was a Are raise. you still in touch with any of the ladies on The View, whether uh -huh. it's the conservatives, the Abby Huntsmans, the uh, McCains, the, the Joy Behars, the Whoopies? I was um, until this appearance that just happened. I mean, I, I actually maintained a, a pretty, you know, decent friendship, um, with Sonny, with Sarah, mm -hmm. occasionally would exchange with Whoopi and Joy. Um, I, my time on the show was actually okay because even though we duked it out sometimes on air, we actually really got along behind the scenes as mm -hmm. a group. It was a cast that really liked each other. Yeah. So I left and even though I was fired, 
um, inexplicably overnight. <laughs> um, I didn't hold that against the cast. And there were people that worked there at the time that aren't there anymore that were responsible for that. Um, but I left kind of feeling like these were still my friends and my family and I was sad. So I didn't trash them in media. I didn't mm -hmm. do any of that. And it wasn't really until this last appearance that I just felt like, wow, that was pretty horrible what happened on air because you guys knew what I was going to say. And I, I, I really thought I was there to have a conversation because I know them. You know, Sonny was at my wedding. You know, I know these people. Yeah. And I said, if you're going to invite me and you know what I'm going to say, either say, forget it, but you're not coming on, let or let me talk. Let's have the conversation. Who's the biggest advertiser for The View? Do you know? Like, who? I don't know, but I know. You know, big farmers in that's all these places, farm. of yeah. course. Sorry, yeah. but, but can you Google and see who's the biggest uh, advertiser on, on The View? I looked it up in 2015. A bunch of advertisers dropped, but that's not the article I'm looking for. I want as recent as possible. Let me go back to it. From the day you got fired, mm -hmm. how many days prior to that was when you questioned Hillary Clinton? Oh, I think it was four. I think I questioned her on a Thursday and lost my job on a Sunday. Oh, it's, I didn't know that. So, so yeah. four days after you... You questioned yeah. Hillary Clinton. So what happened there was, and I've, I've spoken about this with, um, you know, Sonny recently, that we were like, no one really understood what happened there. And I don't know if it's attributed to the Hillary Clinton interview. I really don't. I have no idea. What year was, was this? Twenty was it 16, 17? It's right around there. She was um, right when still the running for out. president yes. or after she lost? No, no, she was, it was after she lost. After she it lost, after she, she lost. wrote a book called right. What Happened. It was the mm -hmm. first live appearance she did on The View, on the and view. she yeah. asked a question. Oh, yeah, that's right. I saw that. Which yeah, was I a asked pointed the question. question. Yeah. I, had, I had just re-upped, like, that summer. You know, you had to, like I said, they had to renew you. Even though you had a three-year contract, they had to renew you. So I signed the paperwork. I was like, okay, I guess I'm in for another year. And that's the way I view this business. You never know. You could be out tomorrow, you know? So I was like, okay, in for another year. I asked what I thought was a pretty benign question. I asked her, I said, listen, you know, you're saying you're acting like you're surprised that Trump won. But it sounds a little tone deaf to me because I was talking to people around the country who were disgusted with a lot of what was going on. Like looking back, do, do you see that maybe these people voted because they, they didn't like what was happening in the prior administration? I thought that was a pretty fair question. Her face said otherwise. I didn't even get to ask, ask about her emails, which was really what I was. There was a little bit of panic at the show that day because I was like, well, can we show here that she signed a piece of paper that said she knows what these classifications mean and she's denied that she knew them, but her signature. And they were like, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. There was a little bit of worry that it was going to be combative. But don't I they like that? Is that like the whole no, point I of the view? They want I to don't see controversy? No, yeah. I think the perception is that. But actually, I think there's a lot of protection that goes on on shows like that for political figures, for point of views. So I didn't get to that. But I, I asked the tone-deaf question. And then four days later, I actually got a call from someone who worked in media. I think, I think it was Oliver Darcy, actually if I'm not mistaken, who wrote, who called me and was like, there's a rumor that like Megan McCain's taking your job. And I was like, oh, well, that can't be. I just, re I was like, what? And I wrote my producer and he was like, oh, we'll get on it. PR. I don't even think the EP of the show knew. No one knew. The oh, so EP she, of the so show. So this came from the high This rocks, came from say, super this high. This is not EP. No. Okay. And my EPs like Candy and Brian were like really quite nice to me and were like, listen, I don't know. And I believed them, and I still believe them because they're, I, I really do. Um, so I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's related to that. I don't know if that was the icing on the cake. I don't know if there were talks going on, and then suddenly someone decided, oh, great, and also that interview didn't help. I don't really know. It's did, just the timing seemed so odd so to me. So when, when did you sign the next year? What, did, how, it was in the summer. Summer. I, how many like weeks or months before the Hillary Clinton? Uh, 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 it was in August. I don't remember. It was several weeks before that. Oh, I had. so so this is fresh. So you sign. It's not like it's six months. No, it's like no, several no. Weeks. It was several weeks. Got it. So they had already committed to having you on for another year. Yeah. So it wasn't like behind closed doors that we're talking to Megan on. Oh, wait, listen. I maybe for okay. all I know. I mean, there are people that have since <clears> been <throat> fired from there that were doing pretty horrible things. That's come out in the news. Um, who I think probably were being underhanded about it in many ways. I don't know. I don't know what conversations were and weren't going on. I just, it, it, it kind of changed my perception of media because I always felt like a contract was a contract. Yeah. And all of a sudden I realized, which was helpful for the future, like yeah. 
okay, you're here today, you could be gone tomorrow. So well, just some, keep that in mind. <laughs> some people would say, just be happy you're sitting here because maybe mm-hmm. you pissed off the wrong person, you know, because yeah. there's certain people in politics you don't piss off because they have a reputation, you know? That's right. And that reputation is a multidimensional type yeah. of a reputation, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. I By piss the way, everyone off, so yeah. I'm in bad shape. Maybe I'll come work here, but, you know? But, but, <laughs> but we would love Let's you get here. get a contract in here ASAP, year to year. Hey, Tyler, do me a favor, pull up, pull up the article... Uh, on uh, 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 yesterday, New York Post, Hillary Clinton, Democrats are preparing her to run. I don't know if you saw that article. I did did see you it. see that? Yeah, Thank I'm curious you. to know. Good. Let, pull I hope it up. So. Let's let's read it. And uh, uh, did you see this or no, Adam? I have not. Adam. Okay, go. There you go. Press Control Plus to make it a little bigger. Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump, 2024. Yep, life has become a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> go a great title. Go up. All right, so we are officially a horror movie where the monsters never dies, the virus never ends, and the next election sees Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. Yes, the two most polarizing presidential nominees of the modern time refuse to go away. Clinton and Trump are more likely than they realize, namely they each live in a reality of their own making. Trump continues to insist that 2020 election was stolen. Hillary believes that she won in 2016. <laughs> What I was doing was working, she told New York Magazine 2017 of Bernie Sanders. Donald Trump said, I beat both of them. Back then, I called Hillary Norma Desmond of American politics, ever ready for her close-up while knuckling her grip on a scene that uh, long ago rejected her as she refused to rule out 2020. Party leaders were vocal about moving on. Joe Biden, I never thought she was a great candidate. Chuck Schumer, when you lose to someone who has 40% popularity, you don't blame other things. You blame yourself. Wow. So... So, so this is this is pretty interesting. Do you think this is a real story, or do you think this is just kind of like New York Post wanted to write a story so people will talk about, but she's not going to be running? You know, I wouldn't put it past her. She's so tone deaf that it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> not only would it not surprise me if she ran again, but it wouldn't surprise me if she ran again and did the exact same stuff she did, you know, multiple other times, skipped states, just, you know, was totally, you know, not paying attention to the actual issues that people care about. That would be a great movie. The problem is, like, we're in pretty distressed times right now like I mean look I'm, I I the person I think should run for Rep- I want to see Ron DeSantis up there I really do um, I think he's done an amazing job and I think he takes no garbage and he holds media accountable but he also like knows when to get out of his own way the problem with Trump and you know I took plenty of heat for criticizing Trump and it wasn't policy that I was criticizing was a, a lot Chris of Wallace. Times. Chris Wallace you made a comment about how he was complaining yeah, about Chris Wallace I was tired of all of yeah. I was just he couldn't get out of his own way oftentimes I think and you I just, called him a third grader yeah because you know the name calling and all of that stuff it was just you know it's funny sometimes and you know it revs up the base and if you're going to a rally it can be like oh ha ha Trump made a joke but you know, the, the bottom line was if he would have just stepped back and let his record speak for itself and just know when to just pivot away. It's not about you. It's not about a petty battle on Twitter. That kind of drove me nuts after a while. So my issue wasn't with policy on him. It was with character and just like, come on, man, just step away and let 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 these, these successes be successes. So DeSantis, you know, I like governors in these positions because they've actually run something. And I really like him. I've seen many interviews where he's just like, that's not what's happening. You know, these are the facts. This is what we're doing in Florida. This is the model for a free nation and a free society. So um, that's what I'm a fan of. And listen, I always welcome a Hillary Clinton run. It's a guaranteed disaster. No so chance she runs. Guaranteed Biden disaster. is a disaster. Wait, but you're saying no chance she runs? Wait, wait, did you just say no chance she as runs? As tone deaf as she is, really, to, to remix it oh, and run it back? You think that You think the Democratic Party wants her back? You no. Think that, you think there's, you know, fervor Who else for is her? There? Who are they going to? Joe Biden is terrible. I don't even think, I don't even think he's. Uh, the, uh, clearly, the Democrats need to figure out who's in their stable. Clearly. We talked about Michelle Obama potentially being uh, a candidate. I've, I've, I've never thought that she was going to run, ever. Now I'm like, well, you know, if there's ever a time in trouble. I, I, don't, I think she runs, she could win. I don't th- again, same thing. I don't think she wants to give up that life. No. Would you vote for the, Trump the, in 2024? Against who? Joe against, Biden? Yeah, or anyone. Oh, anyone, is... anyone. Whoever the Democrats throw up there. Does Trump I, I have will your never, vote? I will never vote for a big government Democrat, ever. I will never vote for big government. So... My problem with Trump, it, you know, I have to listen to what Trump says. And Trump uh, is. We already know what he's going to say. So, yeah, I mean, and what's now different? he's on the vaccines, odd comments, and this, that, and the other thing. What I will say is today, and I, I can't tell you what I'm going to do next round. I know 
I often do a lot of write-ins because I'm like, oh, these people all are just terrible. But I can't tell you what I'm going to do today because I don't know in that situation. Mm. But my my guy is DeSantis. Okay. That's if he who runs. I would. I, if he I, runs. Again, his wife has health issues that he's dealing with right now and he's attending to right now. Uh, if Trump runs, the, the one thing I think it'd be very uncomfortable to see is a stage with Trump and DeSantis together because I don't think that's going to be a good scene. No. Uh, if those two are on the same It'll stage It'll be good together. for DeSantis. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think it'd be great for TV. I, no, I think it'll, it'll be, be great, great for, for DeSantis TV. because DeSantis is is basically going to tout policy better than Trump. He has a very strong record, and he also isn't going to stoop to that nonsense. So he's mm-hmm. going to look like the adult in the room. Is the honest truth? Well, I've been very vocal that someone like me who's somewhere in the middle. A lot of people on this think that I'm a socialist, communist. I'm just not a Trumper guy. I would 100% vote for a DeSantis, mm-hmm. and I would also 100% not vote for a Trump. Mm-hmm. Do you, you understand what I'm saying right. right there? Like, DeSantis, got you, young, vibrant, policy, right. smart, Florida, what's up, let's do it. Trump, really, we're going to run back that horror movie from 20, you know, 2016? So that's something that's... So the, let me ask you a question. Here's yeah. a question for you. Trump, Hillary, what are you doing? Again? Yeah, if it's Trump, Hillary, what are you doing? <laughs> I would vote for Hillary. Yeah, you yeah. would. Seriously, I would. So I can, can absolutely a... tell you, I would not. Trump, listen, if you I take would vote Trump, for Hillary, I think, I think Hillary actually has good policies. I think I she's terrible. tone deaf and not exactly, you know, going to circle the wagons to the Midwest. Go ahead. You want to play this game? No, no. I'm just saying. Can we get a Hillary shirt for him? Can you actually make a I'm note? I'm with I'm her. Gonna, yeah, let's no. get a shirt for him. Get actually, that make a shirt. Note. Let's go make ahead. a note. Make a note next. Trump, podcast. Hillary, for me, like I'm voting for Trump. He's not my ideal. I think he made a lot of mistakes. Mm. I held him accountable for those mistakes on live TV many times. He's not my guy. I'm not like MAGA to the. You know, I don't do that with any politician. But except I, I'm, for uh, Rand Paul. No, I'm also not wearing a Rand Paul hat here today. You know what I mean? Mm. Like that's not my. Can scene. we get her a Rand Paul hat ASAP? Get me please. Rand Paul. No. <laughs> Get but, me, um, yeah, Rand Paul in the front and Sarah Palin the way, on the do, back. Do you think Rand Paul stands a chance at all for ever being in, op- in office? Tell me why. Tell me why. If you, you say no, what do you think? Does he stand a chance? To be president? President. Number one. No. Chief. No? No, I like him. Why I like not? him and I like what he's doing, but on the debate stage... It just doesn't work. He shrinks on the debate stage, really. You mean height wise? No, or? no. I mean, like, uh, I he they... just kind of vanishes. And I feel like he, I remember, I always tweet through these debates, and I remember feeling mm-hmm. like he, all of those issues that he really does care about, like freedom, yeah. and these are things mm-hmm. he lives. It, he has trouble connecting to the audience on those things. Like, I want to see Bingo. someone who people feel like. You, you need to be charismatic in politics. You need to be someone that people feel like that person gets right. me. Rand well, can I tell you something that. about Pat? And this is something that he's taught me, and I'll let you, you know, weigh in on this. There's a difference between policy and personality and persona. And, you, uh, you know, we, we have this debate all the time. Most people vote on persona, and personality. Right. Rand Paul might have amazing policies, but people are going to be like, He's just born in, 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 the, in the days of reality TV, social media. You need yeah. to be a big, vibrant, loud mouth mother sucker in order to sway the masses. Clearly, mm-hmm. Trump did that. You so, know what's interesting I mean, though, what, about what you're saying? Mm-hmm. I agree with you. But that standard oftentimes only applies to Republicans because Kamala Harris is terrible at this. She laughs inappropriately. Well, She's she horrible. also got 4%. Joe Biden is terrible at this. He's, he's in office he's, right now. Some of these Democrats, Hillary Clinton is a horrible candidate. Like, find me someone off the street, a random person off the street, and they will do that better than she does. Mm-hmm. Horrible at being a political candidate. Bernie's not, pretty loud mouth and did his thing. And, and kind of grumpy. I mean, that wouldn't work on the right. How dare Suddenly, you? How on dare the right, you, you need to be, that. like what? You have to be Clint Eastwood on the right. You have to be Luke Perry, basically. I mean, he's, Ew, very, he's very charismatic. Did you see her eyes, like, literally <laughs> flutter as you brought up? My husband's at home watching, like, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> but, um, I'm sure yeah. you've had many sides. So, by the way, Luke Perry or Chris Isaac? Because Chris Isaac showed up. Do you remember Chris Isaac or no? Chris Isaac showed up. The where? singer, Girl, the singer showed up one time on. Woman. Not, not, so, not that one. Not there was him. another one that he had. He had the what was the the the, 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 the video? From, uh, he had this video that he, a jukebox would play all the time, and you would not miss it. Chris, Chris Isaac, Isaac was, on the um, beach. I probably black know. And white. Somebody's crying. Is it somebody's crying? Or? It was from the movie, the, the something, the game, the crying game. Wicked game. It's wicked. Wicked game. game. Wicked game. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was a, that was a pretty game. sick song. By the way, sick remix. I think that. he did a so put in Chris Isaac, Beverly Hills, 90210. Am I just losing my mind here? 
possibly. I thought he was. I think it's um, Isaac with a K. Though. Yeah, he was on Beverly Hills 90210. I, I don't was know. Right. I, you, you missed that episode. You missed that no, episode. Wait. Oh, he was. No, I definitely saw the episode. I have <clears> to see where it was. But, but Pat, you were saying about personality, yeah. persona. Yeah. So, so saying? she has a point because the last election, again, the last election wasn't about personality. I don't think anybody showed up to a Biden rally. Everybody that showed up got a fifty dollars gift certificate to Cheesecake Factory. Like you I, were forced I, I, to I was show up. Them. It was I like, like cheesecake every day now. <laughs> <laughs> but but it was media really made you hate Trump, so they showed up against him. There was no personality or policies. You go to Hillary. It wasn't personality. She didn't focus on policy. The question she asked in the view, which you should see the question she asked, she said, "Do you think one of the reasons my baby that, again? I'm, I'm uh, mm-hmm. paraphrasing." Is because Obama's policies on uh, uh, Obamacare didn't work out. And then as well as you were focused so much against him versus he was focused on policies. And that's why you lost. Do you think that's what really happened? And then she said maybe a little bit. And then she mm-hmm. went and gave her answers. But I think Hillary didn't focus on policies. Hillary, Hillary was more about let's make the first woman, the first female. That was her campaign. It was mm-hmm. never policy. So she's not going to win. She went on Zach Galifianakis. I don't know if you saw that one when she was on yes, Zach Galifianakis. Between two ferns. Is that- between two ferns. Did you yeah. ever see that one? I, I know did, that. sadly. So, <laughs> sadly. So, so Ob- you got to give these Obama went on credit. there. Yes. No, no, no. So she tried to play the Obama playbook. Okay. Not going to happen. The difference is Obama went on there. And he had charm, and right. he won. Right. Right. Hillary right. went on there, and he says, "I'm sorry, we got to take a break for our advertisers." And he plays the Trump video. <laughs> he, says, he says, "This is, this is brought to you by our sponsor, Donald Trump." I don't know if you remember yes, that or 100%. not. Hilarious, yes. right? And then she's like, "What are you, are you doing? Me? Like, what, are you what doing is this right all now? about?" But it was so funny, and her rebuttal wasn't the right one. Like, you just didn't like her. She's so awkward. She, yeah. she's awkward and uncomfortable in that. Very in those robotic. Positions. Bill Clinton was likable. Bush Sr. screwed up because he was kind of like the out-of-touch president, and Ron Paul kind of hurt him a little bit Mm -hmm. when that question was asked about debt. Reagan had charm and charisma and humor probably more than anybody else in the last 50 years. Bush was... Bush was kind of quirky, funny, likable. Like, hey, I want to have a beer with this guy, President. Junior. Yeah, Junior. Mm-hmm. He was different. You know, he, he was different. You anyway. literally did have a beer with him. <laughs> yeah, we had a great time together. But, but uh, 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 today, the question becomes, who do we want today? Like, what does America look for today? Midterms is going to be a shellacking. By the way, oh, did yeah. you guys see the article that came out about Spain and Europe, what they're doing with COVID? Did you see what, what just the, came which out? Which one? Okay, pull up that article about yesterday. Very interesting, by the way. Very, and this tells you a lot about what could happen in America. Go to, it's a Bloomberg article. I just emailed it to you. Uh, uh, there, uh, that's the one. Click on that. Check this out. Pretty interesting. Europe slowly starts to consider <laughs> treating COVID like the flu. Welcome to the normal quote. New metrics are needed as COVID becomes an endemic. Spain PM says. By the way, Spain is a socialist country. Mm-hmm. Okay, Th- their former president left because they raised taxes so high. Mm-hmm. So we're not talking about a capitalistic nation. <laughs> Hospitaliz- uh, hospitalization rates remain manageable despite surging cases. Spain is calling for COVID-19 to be treated uh, as an endemic disease yeah. like the flu, becoming the first major European nation to explicitly suggest that people live with it. The idea has gradually uh, been uh, gaining traction and could prompt a revaluation of government strategies on dealing with the virus. British Education Secretary... Nadahim uh, Zahawi on Sunday told BBC that the UK is on path toward transitioning from pandemic to endemic to Omicron variant, low, uh, variants, lower hospitalization and death rates uh, despite record infections prompt, prompt the Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez to hold out the tantalizing prospect of Europe moving beyond the pandemic mm-hmm. style restriction on normal life. By the way, very, very good news. What does endemic mean? Meaning it's you're like not to the get end rid of it. Right. Like you're not getting Never rid ending. of COVID, like this idea. Mm. And I think it's important to remember how this started. It was like two weeks to flatten the curve. And that meant y- a couple of weeks, you were going to do a lockdown. Yeah. I was somebody that was on board with that, by the way, in the beginning. I was like, okay, two weeks. I think everybody weeks. was, because it was so new and so like, what the hell's going What's on? What's going right, on? Cool. Right, two weeks, flatten the curve. And that meant, okay, we're going to flatten it. We're going to get these hospitalizations down. We're going to get treatments out there, although we now know that a lot of treatments were suppressed. It's a whole other conversation. But regardless, you know, it was okay. Now it's what, two years later? And we're, I mean, some teachers unions are advocating for teachers not to do in person teaching in the United States of America. So this is right. Mm -hmm. This is right. It's endemic. Yes, it's endemic. And Omicron, for the vast, 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 vast majority of people of all age brackets, is a cold. That is what it is. It is a cold for most people. 
and we've never had bad. So I, I'm with you. True, but for bad colds, do you do you not have in person learning for children? Do you not have people mm-hmm. going to work? I mean, this is crazy at this point. So what they're doing, great. Some of us have been saying this for months and months mm-hmm. and months. And it's not happening in the United States. Why is it not now? Well, now you see a little bit. I, there was a report that the AP came out and said, let's not focus on cases anymore. Let's not. How convenient. You had a death tracker up on CNN for how long? Well, of course, you're not going to focus on cases because a lot of these cases are asymptomatic people or people mm. with mild symptoms. And that's not an indication of anything except that, yeah, COVID is around. Omicron is around. People are getting it. They're feeling a little bit sick. A few days later, they're better a lot. Most mm. people. Most people. So, you know, media has changed. You're going to see a lot of manipulation come because they have to protect Joe Biden. And Joe Biden said he was going to get rid of the virus. And he didn't because he wasn't going to get rid of the virus. And Trump wasn't going to get rid of the virus. No one was going to get rid of the virus. Trump also said that it's going to be here today and gone tomorrow by July 4th. Or we're all going to be going going to Easter together. Well, but but here's what I would say. So guess what? America fired him. Right. Which is which is fine. Which is fine. But check this out. Here's the part. And I posted this the other day on a tweet. I said, I look for constant. This is very important to keep talking about this because we had under Trump when COVID came out, the worst day in cases was 300,000 cases. I think it was January 28th of 2021, which he was still president Mm pre-inauguration, right? right. 300,000 cases in a day. The worst day under Biden has been a million 18,000 in a day, which was nine days ago, eight days ago. Million 18 in a single day. So Trump got fired. Obama's the next president. Who has been constant? Biden, Biden, Biden. Biden is president. Trump got fired. Who has been constant during these two administrations? Your favorite One person, person, Dr. Fauci. Anthony Fauci. And by the, the way, man he, here's, here's, so I brought this up, conversation with some people. I was in Vegas yesterday. I just got back from Vegas last night. 11 o'clock, I got back to the place. We had an insurance conference. And we're having this conversation. One guy works at uh, uh, emergency room in uh, uh, Maryland, and he's a doctor. And we're having this debate of what's going on. Fauci. So you make a decision on what to do with this whole situation of the virus on how to handle it. You go back and you look at what he did with AIDS. You go back and look at what he Mm -hmm. did with all this stuff. I'm not even going to go there. Just go read the book by RFK, The Truth About uh, Fauci, if you haven't read it. If you're interested. I think it's a very good book. It's a long book, but it's it's worth the read. I went through the book. It's fascinating. Here's a part. I don't think that position moving forward, I'm comfortable being one person. I don't think I'm comfortable with that. Like a Supreme Court. I think it's a Supreme Court model. I'm comfortable. It's a 3-2. It's a 4-3. He's 80 years old. It's 4-3. And you guys sit there. So guess what? On one side, you have somebody that's part of Peter McCullough camp. You know, you got somebody that's part of a Malone camp. You got somebody that's part of that camp. On the other side, you got a Fauci, you got any of these guys that are there, no problem. Sit down, hash it out, let us, let Congress people question both of you, and let us kind of sit down and hear it. But right now, the only person's argument we are allowed to hear is Tony's. That's right. And, and in business, you know what you would call that? You know what you would a call monopoly. that? You would call that a monopoly. Mm-hmm. And what do we do, monopoly? Story came out just yesterday. Facebook. That the government right now is breaking apart Facebook, saying Meta. WhatsApp, Instagram, yeah. you cannot have all. And by the way, I think they're right as a capitalist. But as a capitalist, I think this guy's got the biggest monopoly and it's hurting America. And I think if, here's a crazy prediction for you. If, check this out, Adam. Curious to know what you would say about this. Jedid, I imagine we wake up tomorrow morning, pre midterms, mm-hmm. tomorrow, Friday, announcement made. The Biden administration is, have decided to uh, part ways with Fauci and a new person is going to be replacing him. Okay, And they'll be announcing it next week or two. How do you think America is going to react if that were to happen? Actually think about And by the way, so, so you have the people on the left, the 47 percent. You have the people on the right who are 44 percent. They're not going to change their positions. The 44 percent is going to be ecstatic. The 47 percent is going to be that's the dumbest decision you ever made. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the middle Take the libertarians at the Green Party. I'd say the middle 12%. How is the middle 12% going to react if they announce tomorrow that Fauci is fired? Well, well. You think they're going to react yes, well? Yes, I do. What, I actually do because he's so horrible and I think people know. But it depends on who goes in there. And you're, what you're saying about, you know, put someone who's like Fauci, put someone who's like Malone, let them hash it out. That will never happen because these people are big pharma mouth, mouthpieces. End of story. That's who Fauci is. He is a big pharma mouthpiece. He has lied repeatedly to people 
about a number of issues over and over and over again. He lied about what the vaccine was capable of. He lied about what it was incapable of. He lied about masks. He's telling people, don't see your unvaccinated family members. Why? Vaccinate everyone I know who's vaxxed has either can, can get it. They're spreading it. It's happening all over the place. Why? So I think there's a lot of people in the country that distrust him and want him out. But they also distrust the system at large. And they don't believe they, they're questioning now Big Pharma at large as people who never thought to ask questions about this stuff who are now saying, wait a minute, why, why is there a liability protection for X, Y, and Z? Why is there no accountability from Big Pharma? Why are they allowed to tout statistics and whatnot? And then if those statistics go down the toilet two months later, they don't have any accountability for what's actually gone on. So I actually think the population would love that, but they would be like, okay, well, who is it now? And I don't believe that the Biden administration would ever put someone forth that would be neutral. Neutral is dangerous. Well, and they so they tried that with Corona. <clears throat> they they had remember the task force. Yeah. They had like six or seven people on the task force. They and had the lady who wore the scarf every day. Yeah, uh, Deborah Burke. She had yeah. Fauci. Yeah. You had everybody else. And the only there was everybody was in conjunction except for one scientist, which was uh, Scott Atlas. And and they all they squashed him. It Not only all, did they squash him, but they squashed all of the doctors in the Great Barrington uh, Great Barrington Agreement. It's called or whatever it's called Declaration Great Barrington Declaration that were coming out and saying, let's focus on the vulnerable here, but you. you you can't lock down a whole society. You can't do this to kids who are not at risk of this infection. I mean, kids have a 99.997% plus survival rate to COVID-19. And that is when you're even counting deaths as with COVID as opposed to from COVID. So they're not interested in what you're suggesting. That is not interesting to them. What they want is this is the path. People that we know that we want their pockets lined are going to get their pockets lined. They also wanted fear and despair in the population. They wanted people scared, terrified, feeling like you're not going to back mandates and lockdowns unless you are terrified. So they needed the country scared, even if that wasn't justified. And now you see them coming out and saying, oh, you know, half the people in New York hospitalized with COVID actually weren't hospitalized for COVID. They just incidentally tested positive and many of them were asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic, that had nothing to do with why they were being hospitalized. They needed you to believe differently because division breeds loyalty to a regime. Division breeds loyalty to very intrusive policies that that stand to overtake your entire life. And they needed that. And now they're realizing that people are just awake because they're like, wait a minute, you told me this, this didn't happen. You told me if I got vaccinated, I wasn't going to get sick. I got sick anyway. This doesn't make sense. So they're having to walk back their stats now. And you're going to see collusion between the CDC and the Biden administration and the teachers unions. Eventually, they're going to roll in late on all of these talking points and media. You're going to see the AP. You're going to see you already see it at CNN. Jake Tapper coming out and asking all of a sudden he has these questions. Come on. It's it's strategically colluded between all of these people. And they would have never, ever allowed for dissent in those spaces. And think about big pharma perspective too and the money that would have been stood to to lose there because if you ask questions even just say empowering people to do their own risk benefit analysis there would have been people that got vaccinated anyway my parents would have gotten vaccinated anyway right. that was a decision they made which by the way i supported them in that decision i made those appointments yeah. for them i drove them to those appointments but there would have been people who didn't want the vaccine but got it for work because they couldn't put food on the table for their families otherwise that would not have gotten people it. People that get fired because they don't right. want to take the vaccine. Well, how about all, now they're putting COVID positive nurses and doctors. Oh, if you're asymptomatic but you have COVID, you can go back into the hospital because there's shortages. You fired COVID recovered nurses and doctors who weren't That's symptomatic. That's a work long term, though. They're not going to win like that, though, Jedi. It's not going to happen. Look, no. Look what's happening with Kyrie Irving right now. He's laughing it up, sitting on yes, the sidelines. As he By should the be. way, let me tell you salute to him for not giving in. Succumbing to the uh, I cannot t- give you, I cannot tell you how much I respect the fact that the yeah. guy who to me and I'm telling you right now I'm not a Kyrie fan. You've heard what I've said about this. this is this is a guy that's like I don't care about this. I don't care about this. The fact that he said no, I'm not taking it, and the NBA had to pivot and adjust and say what? Yep. Fine, you can play. I don't think well, he long- still can't play in New York City. It or doesn't Brooklyn matter. He's going to run long term. He's going to. He's proven. He's the one that's making progress, not the NBA. His yeah. argument is making progress, not the NBA's. 
The That's NBA true. gave in to him and said, okay, fine, go ahead. Because the NBA owner said, listen, man, like we, you got to let this guy play. And we're going to get this guy to play. I'm a capitalist. I got to run my business. I, I'm paying this guy 19, 20 million a year. Right. I'm paying this guy to come play. Well, so other cities just him. don't have vax mandates. He played, his, I think his first game was Indiana. Indiana's like, all right. It, it doesn't play. matter. But, but here, here's, here's the angle that, that kind of is it's interesting to me. So I'm a fan of Bernie Sanders as a person. Hear okay. me out. Hear me out yeah. where, I'm, where I'm going with this. I, I, I had a communist on. I've had a lot of communists. I probably interviewed, I don't know, six or seven communists, right? Sometimes That's people what Pat like, does on the weekends. Yeah. Uh, debates <laughs> communists. And, and Those I, are fun. I would love to know how many of those videos were pulled. I'm guessing none. None of them. They're all that on. Is, Absolutely. That is so surprising yeah, 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 to me. That's a, that's a good, Color me shocked, what everyone. A, what a great research oh. we just did in two seconds. She's right. right. None of them have been pulled. But I have these commies on, and I interview them. And I'm curious to know what they think. Mm -hmm. And I respect the ones that are true believers. The ones that are just phony, trying to sound like right. they're, you know, you, you'll catch them very quickly. Within 30 minutes, you're full of shit. You're not really, what are you talking about, right? Okay, so you're just acting up. But some of the guys you talk, you're like, okay, cool. I respect it. I think Bernie's a true believer. Mm -hmm. You know what's confusing to me with Bernie? Why I think a Bernie and a Bernie and an AOC in the most strangest way are necessary. Let me explain why. AOC the other day called out, not the other day, about five weeks ago called out Pelosi saying, Congress, you know, people in politics shouldn't be able to, you know, uh, Trade invest stocks. because, yeah, because we have insider information. It's like, no, I'm, I'm going I'm to invest. You can't tell me anything. I'm going to do it, right? But by the way, other people are now coming in and somebody, not Jim Jordan, who was a guy that, maybe even Jim Jordan, who called that Pelosi recently? Not Jim Jordan, the other guy. There's Mark a, Meadows? I don't know. I don't know who it was. Pull up to see who just called that Pelosi. Here's where I'm going with this. Mark Meadows? Do you know the medicine AZT? Mm -hmm. AZT was for AIDS. I only right? know Sudafed. That's all I got. Okay, that's right. But AZT, <laughs> AZT was a, 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 a pill they came up with for yep. AIDS, which, by the way, some claim 330,000 people died from this. Like, remember Accutane had a lot of side effects? Yes. Yeah. Like, this is like times, you know, a, a lot higher. People so died from taking AIDS medication. People died medication, from AZT. taking AIDS medication. Mm -hmm. But here's the part. When they built this medicine, when they finally came out with this medicine, do you know how much it cost them to make each pill? Two cents mm. is what it cost them to make. Mm. Pennies. Selling it for a hundred bucks a pill? What no, okay. ten thousand dollars. What? And and guess guess who was for it? A guy named Fauci. Yep. So a person that shouldn't be for what Fauci is doing is in a random way. I think an AOC, if a and a, and a Bernie Sanders, if they come together and they realize that this guy is simply supporting big pharma. AOC and Bernie could play a very important role in a Fauci no longer being here because Bernie keeps talking about what? What does Bernie say? How could you charge so much for this medicine? How could you charge so much for this medicine? You never a free college. Do, do you realize this thing, the this thing costs 60 cents to make, but they're selling it for $1,000? Okay, Bernie, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, I'm with you. You're right. Keep pushing the envelope because the guy that's endorsing and allowing these things to happen because here's what happens with them. They got 20 different products that's being pitched. Hey, this could be the cure for this. But I'm only looking at the five that I want to deal with because it's got, I'm not spending time investigating these other ones. So my resources are being used for this five. But these other 15, they're cheap, cost-effective, less side effects, less test them out. No, not right now. Maybe a year from now. Mm -hmm. Maybe two years from now. Maybe three years from now. So I think the possibility of Fauci getting fired could be high. And in the most random, weirdest way, I think the people that can help that happen is Bernie and AOC. That's the thing is, though, Bernie and AOC, and you're you're right. I mean, these are not these should not be big pharma allies. They should be sounding the alarm on all this stuff. But the problem is, is that they're benefiting from the chaos, the division, and the panic. Again, part of all of this is is panic, right? You know, because there there are treatments available now. We shouldn't be panicked now. This is not March of 2020. There are treatments available. There are monoclonals. Mm -hmm. There are drugs that we know. Yes, ivermectin has been used successfully. I know Joe Rogan took a bunch of hits, but it's true. There have been numerous studies on that. There's hydroxy, which mm -hmm. people have taken. There's other treatments that are available for people now. If you take that panic away, if you take that division away, communism cannot thrive. You can't. It can't. It needs that because you have to believe that the state is for it. You have to believe that it's the state. 
It's what Fauci says. These people are sheep. They walk around. They're like, I don't know what to do. Do I double mask? Do I shield? Yeah. Do I triple mask? They need <laughs> that. So if you remove that and all of a sudden AOC yeah. starts questioning big pharma, people will start realizing, well, wait a minute. Was this a lot of this? Did a lot of this have to do with money? Did a lot of this have to do with suppression of treatments? Did we really need to be panicking for this long so about this back, condition? And I'm going to see what yeah. you're going to say. I'm going to push back and see what you're going to say. So um, how many people on the right would like to see a third party? None. On the right? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, listen. <laughs> l l like, let me ask you a question. Yes, there are people, but it's not in a majority because they know that a third party will enable a Democrat success. Oh, but, but now, let me ask the other question. How many people on the left would like to see a third party? Mm -mm. You don't think so? Okay. Well, this is my idea on what I'm thinking that I, I do believe both sides want to see a third party. Hear me out. Hear me out here. I think AOC is sick and tired of these Democrats that are getting in the way. I and I think that. AOC is convinced they're never going to buy in to what she's bought into, ever. And I think AOC is eventually going to sit there and say, you know what? I'm loud enough. I got a bigger mic. I get more likes. I get more eyeballs. I have more followers. I got the younger audience. You don't. I'm sexier. I'm more attractive. I talk better. I speak better. And I'm a true believer and I'm, I'm going to get these guys to be convinced we need a third party. So what's the third party? A third party, say, Democratic Socialist Party comes out. Let's just say. I'm just throwing this out there. Yeah. Speculation, right? right? I think where, where that 12% of America wants to go to, that I think America is run by 12%. I don't think America is run by anything else but the 12%. Mm -hmm. In the middle, you mean. In the middle. I think, I think 12% runs America. I think all the other guys are just wasting time. 12% of America runs America, period. It's a 12% that was like, you know what, I don't know about Trump, let me go over here. It's the 12% that said, you know, I don't know about Obama, let's go to Trump. Yep. It's the 12%. The 12% runs in the Rust Everybody Belt. Everybody else typically. is just talking. Ohio, Michigan, Everybody Wisconsin, Indiana. Everybody is talking. 12% is the one that runs the country. I think if it gets to the tipping point where these guys are eventually sitting there having a strategy session, because I think the four, you know, what do you call the four? The four girls. What's the, the, the squad? squad. Right? Mm -hmm. I think if those guys are sitting behind closed doors and saying, hey, girls, you know what? Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go all out. Here's what we should do. Now, you're shaking your head. No, I, I see where you're going with this. I'm right? telling you right yeah. now, I actually think that's good for America. I actually think it's good for America if some of those guys go mm -hmm. and some of the people from the right go because I think the left what do you takes mean on the hit. right? I think the right, from the right, they're like, screw this. I want to be a libertarian. I'm going to go independent. Let's push. Let's actually bank on bringing a Ron Paul, not a Ron Paul, a... Uh, 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 the founder of the internet. What's the guy? Uh, um, the guy that hurt Bush. And it's Al, not Al Gore. Ross uh, Perot. Ross Perot. Yeah. Let's get the next Ross Perot true believer. A mm -hmm. Shamat type of guy. A you know person like that's like screw Republicans, screw Democrats. I'm an independent. I'm oh, a yeah. real independent oh, that yeah. can make sense. That's a salesperson that can get you to say this makes sense. Like you're saying, Rand Paul doesn't. He's so intellectual that he can't speak the language of the average person. Believe it or not, I think there's going to be some positive happening from some of these socialists because they're not for big pharma. And, and if you have to look at enemies, like if you, can, if you sit there right now and make a list of enemies, like concerns, like if you, you know, uh, uh, if you sit there and you got, you got, I don't know if you guys got kids or no She's kids. Right? One kid. One kid, really. Hartley, How? two years old. That's two the name of her book. That's Dear Hartley. Dear Hartley. That's, Dear Hartley. Right. Dear that's Hartley. my baby. Who are you writing down over there? You wrote an enemy down, I feel. Two years no, old. no, no. I wrote a little note for myself. He's it's too fantastic. perceptive. He's so too perceptive. I got a nine, eight, five. And a six and a half month old baby. Oh my God, right? how so, are you not exhausted? Uh, you, Vampire. You, my blood eyes right don't here. see anything. But anyway, so, so here's, here's where I'm going with this. I think those guys are ambitious enough to believe that. And I think if we look at the current enemies, look at the list of top 10 enemies. Like you're raising kids and you say, who are the enemies of me raising kids? Well, what school am I going to put them? Teachers? Like weird things you think as an enemy of a, a kid a teacher, a friend, a coach. A Sunday school teacher, like you got to be kind of keeping your eyes open yeah. to see who's there, right? Uh, son of a friend's, you know, kids, like some of that stuff. You know, okay, who are the long term enemies of America, of us? Okay, so one is Silicon Valley. You have to put that on that list. Uh, two is what? Let's say socialists. Okay, fine. Big pharma's got to be in the top 10, yeah. mm -hmm. okay? China. Lobbyists got to be in the top 10. China's at the number one spot, right? You got to put Russia's probably in the top 10. Iran's probably in the top 15. Mm -hmm. But you have to put big pharma on that list. So now how do you play against them? The way, the way this happens on holding them accountable, 
is when both sides kind of team up and say, you know what? No, it, it took you five cents to make this. $10,000 is just too much abuse. And all these health insurance costs you guys keep on increasing. I have a lot of employees. Every year I'm paying more health insurance. And I have the, the friction with the employee. Well, my health insurance is going up. I'm like, dude, I didn't increase your health insurance 30%. Mm -hmm. This is what's increasing the health insurance. I think there are certain things that those two sides can disrupt big pharma. I don't know. I maybe maybe I had too much Sudafed this morning. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Shout out. Sudafed. So Sudafed's I, having a good I think, podcast I, mean, you have a, I think you have a very valid point yeah. right here. Everything you're saying Anyways, is... I may, be, I may be confused and lost, but I think my point makes sense. So here's the problem with that, though. If that segment of the left, you're talking about the AOCs, the Bernie Sanders, yeah. if they're going to come out and criticize big pharma, they're going to come at it from the perspective of the solution is socialized medicine. The solution Medicare is more for government. The solution right. is Medicare for all. That's a problem that's going to appeal... It'll appeal to some. It will enrage others. Also, they're going to have a really hard time doing that because they need the support. If you're going to criticize big pharma, you also have to criticize the FDA. You also have to criticize collusion that goes on between government organizations and institutions and these pharmaceutical companies and how really intrinsically linked they often are. They're not going to do that. So the, the right is the people on the right who criticize big pharma will come in and say, well, they'll talk about profits, but they'll talk about the answers to a lot of this is innovation, is choice, is freedom, is opportunity. The people from the left who criticize big pharma are going to say, well, they're all about profit. And the way that we fix this is that we remove profit. And then you have socialized medicine where people are waiting, you know, lines and lines and lines. And you have government deciding for you instead of big pharma deciding for you what you need. You need this. You need that. You're going to have government deciding it for you. And yeah, maybe it'll be less expensive, but I don't know that the outcome is any different. So... I think it's very tricky. I don't, my, my question is always, how much support? I know AOC's popular. She's on TikTok. She's talking to young people. Most of what she says to me makes absolutely no sense. If I mean, I encourage her to come and sit and have a debate with me. I think it would be really great television. Most of what she says can easily be pushed back on and makes very little sense. But who, who how much of the country actually is is going to support someone like that. Because I do think there are a lot of people who will and a lot of people who won't. But my concern is, what does that number look like? What is that percentage? Are we now seeing in America where these mandates and this way of life and this shift towards socialism is increasingly much more popular so that someone like an AOC, she ultimately decides one day she wants to run for president, actually has a chance? And what does that look like? I don't know. I think no, I don't. I think we're really very split right now in the United States of America. And, and you, you, all you need to do is, you know what, everybody out there, take a trip to New York City and spend three days there and then come out to, you know, Miami, head out to, to, to Dallas, Texas, and just see the two completely different worlds we're living in. But I don't, I don't know how helpful it is. I don't know. I mean, I always think splitting up political parties has an advantage because you force people to actually stand for something. Um, but the, the allegiances will be the same, right? Like AOC needs the teachers unions. The, the, the establishment Democrat needs the teachers unions. AOC needs government agencies. The Democrat establishment needs government agencies. That's why these third parties don't work oftentimes because they're out there on their own. They have you. to break all sure. of those ties. And then, and then <clears throat> who's funding them? Where are their donations coming from? The people could work. I don't know. Well, I mean, that's, that's the good part because neither Bernie nor AOC are getting checks from the big from big pharma. Again, that's the part where you got to respect, where it's a lot of smaller guys right. that are giving them the money, right? It's the government, though. Is sure. that better? I, I totally get it. But the part is, it doesn't matter. If, if, the two, if the two groups can unify on one enemy, one is going to pitch, this is why the government's got to take care of it. The other one's going to say, no, you got to make the barrier to entry to compete a lot low because these guys are not mm -hmm. helping the smaller companies come up and compete against a Pfizer, compete against this guy. It's pretty much a control at the top, right? So meaning for the longest time, tell me one automaker that competed in America. Right. When's the last time an automaker competed in America? When's the last time? You know how many years it's been? Do you know how many years it's been that a new automaker comes out and whoops some ass? When's Tesla. the last time? No, no, no. Prior to that. Prior what, to Tesla, you're saying. Who was it? Name it, DeLorean? An, Amer an American <laughs> company? Who, yeah, who, who, an, Amer not an, yeah, an American company comes out and competes. Other than the big three, other than GM, Ford, Chrysler. Yeah. Tell mm -hmm. me one. Nobody. I can't even think Do of Do you name. realize how many years that is? So what happens with Tesla? What's the best thing that happened with America? Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Tesla comes out, mm -hmm. disrupts the automotive industry. They're, they're scared. They're sitting there saying, holy freaking moly. Uh, Biden and his administration holds an EV meeting in, at the White House. They invite Chrysler, they invite Ford, they invite GM, right. and the only guy they don't invite 
is the guy that disrupted the EV, Elon Musk. So how so necessary is an Elon Musk? Very necessary. But he's, he's not a politician. So here's that. the thing. But I'm he, saying, but I'm saying opposing, uh, I'm saying if the two like, like, but Elon Musk is also not a Republican, right? Right. Elon Musk is probably independent. He's not a Republican. Yeah. You can't sit there and say Republican. Right. All I'm saying is, I think the people on the right, anything they say about Big Pharma, the left is going to say what? Yeah, they're going to say something like that. Well, how about the fact that, you know, Ruber, you know, Murdoch and what Fox mm-hmm. is doing? But if an AOC and a Bernie says that, mm-hmm. then Democrats have to sit there and say, ooh, maybe Bernie's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. look, this is true. This is like this whole thing right now, the confusion with my body, my choice. Right. What is my body, my choice? Right. My body, my choice is what? Is, hey, if I want to get an abortion, it's up to me. Mm-hmm. Right. You're right. Look at the hypocrisy in the last 12 months. Yeah. You're right. My body, my choice. And that, <laughs> that's a debate. That's a little bit different, too, um, because and people always say, well, my body, my choice. You're right. There is a lot of hypocrisy from people who would argue who would support abortion, but then would turn around and tell you that, you know, the vax mandates are totally legit. But the difference with that is also because pe- and people will come out and say, well, that involves another person. You know, if you're pregnant, that involves another life. That's a whole different pro-life argument that would have to be brought in and, you know, debated. But and I understand what you're saying, but I don't think. I think that what you would be suggesting would imply that these politicians are principled and don't have those underlying ties to establishment X, Y, and Z throughout. Like, I don't think AOC is someone who's out there. You saw a year ago, I remember, she was making headlines. She was going after Pelosi. They were like, the division, the left is falling apart. She took two steps forward and she fell right back in line because she understands that there's a lot of power that comes from being part of something. She She can criticize them. I don't know. I don't know if what you're talking... I think there are people who can break the system. Right. But I firmly believe that those people come from outside of Washington, D.C., not inside. Yeah. To me, I see Bernie and AOC that they believe what they're talking about. Bernie more than AOC because Bernie got married and he, his honeymoon was in Russia. I mean, did you go to Russia on your honeymoon? I didn't go to <laughs> well, Russia Well, he believes it, but he's not He's not living. His lifestyle doesn't ascribe he, the, to true. what... True. I mean, he's he's got a ton of money. Yeah. He's and 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 he had he does have a lot of money, but he's also a guy that in the area of going up against big pharma, I'm just telling you, he will play a very important yeah, role possible. in beating those guys. Mm-hmm. He's very very important in that area. Mm-hmm. Okay, you and I don't have to agree on. Hey, you don't like Tyler? I don't like Tyler. Oh, whatever. Okay, so, but, but you like him? I don't like him. Whatever. I like Adam, you don't like, like Adam, mine. whatever. <laughs> but if you and I agree and I say, look, that guy right there, I don't agree with that. He does this, this, this. Yeah. But that one thing, I can I can go on that one thing with you. Yeah. And you open up and say, look, folks, Bernie here and I don't agree on 99% of things. But let me tell you the one thing that we agree on. There's no way in the world medication costs $1,000 mm-hmm. when they make it for pennies. That's right. the one area, Bernie. Is it fair to say we agree on that? I say, I, I think we want to see that. We want to see it. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen because that's not how the, the see, size I, of the I, political aisle works. I read this book called The Power of Positive Thinking. <laughs> <laughs> You're very positive. You and I understand. No, I, 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 in, an, in, a, in a different political environment, yeah. in a different world, I, I hear what you're saying. It sounds great that people would be able to focus on an issue, come together on different sides of an aisle, attack that issue. They're just, it's not going to happen because they, they see it as a domino effect and they're going in such drastically different directions solution-wise. That's the problem. My solutions are over here. Your solutions are over here. Never to come and meet in the center for any reason. Um, I just don't think it's going to happen. But we can agree to disagree on that one. Literally. I'll watch. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll be. I'll, I want front row tickets Bernie, and popcorn if that starts Bernie, happening. Bernie, if, if you want to talk, Big Pharma, <laughs> please. You Come have the here. mic. Come on here. Let's talk. He's topic, not going to do it. Big Pharma. I wouldn't be surprised if Bernie shows up one of these days. Okay. Mm. You talked about Rogan earlier, right? I want to read this story. Can you pull yeah, up this uh, Tech Insider article that just came out, <laughs> which is absolutely, uh, and, and I'm going to give you a prediction. I'm going to make a prediction here with this on what I believe is going to happen uh, next. <laughs> uh, do you know which one I'm talking about? I emailed it to you. If you want to pull it up, you should have it somewhere there. Uh, so, so, folks, a lot of people are not happy with this guy named Joe Rogan. Can uh-huh. you do me a favor and go to the actual article instead of just having it that way? Go to the actual article. It says, uh, put Spotify, misinformation, scientists, police, those words, it should come up. 
Doctors call on Spotify to swap. Okay, there you go. Here we go. We, we'll read this. Doctors call. Make it a little bit bigger so I can read it. Doctors call on Spotify to stop COVID misinformation, citing Joe Rogan podcast. The platform <laughs> is helping damage public trust and scientific research. According to a letter signed by hundreds of medical mm -hmm. professionals, I believe the number is 270, by the way, that signed this. Go a little bit higher. Medical uh, professionals. More than 250 medical professionals have signed a, an open letter calling on Spotify to clamp down on COVID misinformation, spreading on this platform, especially calling out the podcast of comedian Joe Rogan. The letter took issue with December 31st episode of Joe Rogan Experience Podcast when he featured Dr. Robert Malone, an immunologist who claims to have created the mRNA technology but is now vocal skeptic of the vaccine that use it um, by allowing the propagation of false and societally harmful assertions. Spotify is enabling its hosted media to damage public trust and scientific research and so doubt in the credibility data-driven guidance offered by medical professionals. Great words, by the way, the way they worded that. Mm -hmm. Sounds very legit. This is not a scientific or medical concern. It's a sociolo so sociological issue of devastating pro uh, proportions and Spotify's response for alums. The letter was first uh, reported Wednesday by Rolling Stone. Okay, so now watch this. So now they're attacking who? They're going after Rogan, Rogan. but they're really going after who? This is not Spotify. Rogan. They're going after Spotify, mm -hmm. okay? So who yeah. is, who, who runs Spotify? Who is the CEO of Spotify? Who is the CEO of Spotify? Pull up CEO of the Spotify, okay, and you'll see who he is. Daniel and, Ek. Yeah, and, and what he wants to do, okay, what he wants to do. Swedish billionaire, Yeah, by the way. Swedish billionaire. Here, he's 38 years old. Young dude, And wow. he wants to win that game. I think uh, uh, Michelle Obama's with them, podcast. Kardashians, I believe, is with them, podcast. They're going after all the big names, right? Where's Obama and um, uh, yeah, I know Bruce Springsteen? Springsteen. Yeah. Here's all I'm saying to you. Watch in the next week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, if they go after this guy. Because now mm -hmm. he's a target. Mm -hmm. Okay, watch if something comes out with a Me Too uh, uh, drug habit. Watch if something comes out with his personal life. Mm -hmm. You know, he lost Super Mario Brothers when he was 18. Watch something comes out. <laughs> right. He broke up with his first girlfriend. He likes older women. He <laughs> likes whatever. He's into certain kinky things. Something's going to come out about this guy in the next few days. You think there's going to be some hit pieces? Are you be, mm -hmm. Think yeah. about it this way. For sure. Who is, like that whole thing with Getter, right? The, the Getter Twitter, mm -hmm. and Joe Rogan called him out. I think he said the... One of the investors in Getter is what, a Chinese something? Mm -hmm. I don't know if yes. you saw that or not, that he called it out. I so did. even Rogan, who got them a million people, he still slammed them. And he said, Joe Rogan slammed social media platform, Getter, call it, uh, 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 what does he call it? F uh, Fugazi just days after Fuckery. John Fuckery. Yeah, okay, Fuckery. Joe, and for Fugazi just days after joining, go go a little lower. Okay, so anyway, so Joe Rogan, ad, calls, Joe Rogan calls, mm -hmm. Joe Rogan calls out, um, this new app because the investors in the back end are Chinese. But right now, Silicon Valley, think about how many people, like our most viewed interview on Spotify is Dr. Malone's interview. Right. Our, our most viewed interview ever on Spotify is Dr. Malone because mm -hmm. everybody says, where can I get it? Spotify. You can go to Spotify. We right. don't have a Rumble account. Rumble account CEO reached out to me. We're going to have a conversation, see what happens there, but I'm not on Rumble. Mm -hmm. So point being, if this happens, and they're now fearing what Rogan's doing, yep. if Daniel stays strong, as big as Spotify is, they're about to blow up even more. Oh, if yeah. he stays strong, they're about 100%. to blow up even more. But see, this this should terrify everyone what's going on. I mean, and you know, I, I saw that Joe Rogan was a target, so I started listening to him because I was like, what is this guy doing over there that's getting so much heat? People are terrified. He's just having people on and asking questions. He's just having guests. They're coming on, yeah. doctors. He's asking questions. He's not telling everyone, don't get vaccinated. I have never heard him say that. He's saying, look, I know people who had bad side effects. I know people who didn't. What's going on here with the data? You know, he taught, he, a video was released the other day that I had missed from December where he's talking about how pharmaceutical companies, they're the only ones that retain their raw data. This is important information. And you have Americans left, right, and center right now who are tired of establishment media. Because, yeah, you know, you showed that article and it says, oh, all these medical professionals hate this. Who, who are you talking about? Are you talking about big pharma allies that are threatened by someone who's actually asking questions to people like Malone? Why are you so threatened by Malone? You have a million doctors sitting on cable news all day long that for the last year and a half have been spouting lies and nonsense that have then, we've watched every single one of those things be disproven. 
most of them have never apologized for anything. But you can't listen to Dr. Malone on Joe Rogan give his opinion and talk about what he sees happening. Why is there a shutdown? So people should be absolutely horrified by what's happening. And you know what? Go and listen. Go get on Joe Rogan's show and just listen. Because the same thing happened to me. You know, I was shut down for misinformation on network television. I then wrote an article. I don't know if you know this, but the Daily Mail had approached me. I saw that. They re, they took it back or something they, like they that. They pulled it down yeah, in the I middle of the night. They, they asked me. Down. Daily Mail. The Daily Mail yeah. asked me to write an article about my stand on vaccines. I wrote the article. I submitted it. It was edited. Like, I agreed to the edits. They published it. In the middle of the night, it disappears with no explanation. This is happening to people in every aspect of media. There is a shutdown of people just asking questions. So, you know, and nothing I said in the I then posted screenshots and I was like, look at what I'm saying. I'm telling people to make their own informed decision based on their own risk benefit analysis and their own conversations with their doctors. That's somehow threatening to big pharma. And of course it is because big pharma is coming out with one size fits all approaches and one size fits all never works in medicine. It never works in health. Anyone who's had any health obstacle in their life knows that one size fits all is garbage. Mm -hmm. So... Be scared. You know, when we were talking about the election, I remember people talking about, you know, a stolen election. And I didn't buy into that because I w they were talking about voting machines. And I was having conversations. I was on Fox News at the time with GOP officials on the ground who were telling me this is not true. You know, we are Republicans. We are making sure we are counting these. We are manually counting them after this stuff, you know, is tallied up in the machines. This is not happening. And I say now, if you're going to talk about an election and collusion, what you really should have been talking about is this stuff. There was collusion going on between big tech. There was collusion going on between politicians and big pharma. All of that was happening. All of that was happening. That was what led to the election changing the way that it did. It wasn't about COVID. It was about all of that stuff. It was about manipulation of data. It was about manipulation of information. It was about CNN's tracker that was up, the death tracker, and now suddenly is not there. This was all targeted. So if you're a free speech advocate, I don't care. I don't give a damn if you're a Republican, a Democrat, a Libertarian. If you are a free speech advocate and you just want people to be able to have their voices heard, to have their questions answered, then you should be appalled by what is going on right now with the shutdown of voices. And Joe Rogan is an example of that. And the only reason he's getting attention is because he has a ton of viewers. And they're like, oh, my God, this may convince people to realize that they should have ownership of their own lives and their own health. That's all it's about. His viewership puts uh, MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, Hannity, uh, Tucker to shame. I mean, we had the stats up last right. podcast. And I don't agree Hannity with him close. on everything. I mean, Joe, Joe Rogan the, and I as don't. As Pat says, the most necessary voice in America right yeah, he's now. Right. He yeah, can't he be bought. And, and, and so no is every individual it. podcast. Yeah. And that's people are like getting away from corporate media. Yeah. And they're listening to people like you. They're listening to people like Rogan. They're listening to all of these people who are just telling you what they think and having guests on and, mm -hmm. and asking hard questions. That's all it's about. But science, science is meant to be questioned. Mm -hmm. And if you are opposing that, then, then you're endorsing propaganda. But Jeff, you know, you, know, the, you know, the problem with Big Pharma is that there's no money in natural immunity. It can't be monetized. I said right. that for a so long like, time. Exactly. Right. So if there's no money in it, why the hell would they just encourage that? She yeah, said there's a lot of money in vaccines and masks and everything. There's over 140 studies now that confirm natural immunity. Natural immunity is not new. Mm -hmm. This is not a new concept. You know, when I went, when I was pregnant and I went to the doctor and she tested me, you know, things like measles and chicken pox can be dangerous if you get them when you're pregnant. So she said, we're going to test you. We're going to test you for antibodies. Even though I had been vaccinated for measles when I was young, I had had actually had been exposed to chickenpox. I never got the rash, but I had the antibodies. She tested me. She said, okay, you, you have the antibodies and don't worry. She didn't say, oh, you have the antibodies. Let's vaccinate. Let's give you a, a booster. This is not new to scientists. And there's a lot of doctors around the country that have been outraged. Not, these are doctors who are vaccinated. The guy who wrote my medical exemption is vaccinated himself. These are not anti-vax. It's not a group of anti-vaxxers. These are doctors who are saying. Dr. Malone is vaccinated. Yes, he's he vaccinated. And, he's and he been got labeled COVID. As, he thought he was going to die. He's been labeled as anti-vax yeah. in virtually every headline yeah. that's come out. That is absurd. You know, Even it, though he took uh, the He took the vaccine. By the way, I mean, listen, this is, this is, this is the part that uh, uh, becomes a challenge. In 2012, I lose my voice. For six months, I can't talk. So if you, it, you like, I can't talk at all. I'm struggling six to talk. Six months? Six months. That's a long time. Yeah. That's a long time. So I'm talking like this. Hey, Adam Howard. That's how I'm talking. Six months. So I'm, And I'm going on tour speaking. Oh, my God. It's a, it's a freaking very strange time. So I go to the doctor. Doctor's like, yeah, I hate to say this. You got cancer. I said, what? He said, you got cancer. So what are you talking about? I got cancer. He says, let me show you. 
He shows, he says, that's cancerous and it's spreading and we got to do something about it. I'm like, oh my gosh. He says, we got to do surgery tomorrow. I said, I can't. I got to go to Hawaii. I got a speech I'm giving in Hawaii, but I can do it on Monday. He says, no, it's very important. I said, I'm going to do the speech in Hawaii. I'll come back. And so I go to Hawaii. I do the speech. I come back Monday morning, 5 a.m. They do the surgery. But I called two other doctors that day and I went and saw. And the other doctor says, no, nah, I don't think it's cancerous, but you should do the surgery. No, I don't think it's probably going to be benign. But, you know, best thing is to handle it ASAP in case it mm -hmm. is cancer. Okay, Monday morning, 5 a.m., we go in. Surgery is done. I wake up. They take it out. They call me two, three days later, and I'm in Colombia out of all the places. And he says, hey, it's benign. You're fine. Okay, great. Fantastic. But the process was after the first person told me I got cancer, I got a second opinion. Right. When somebody tells you what you got, you get a second opinion. It's almost as if we can no longer use that philosophy of go get a second opinion. For centuries, for decades, That's we've right. been told, get a second opinion. No, you can't get a second opinion. Can you imagine if you can't get a second opinion on a health matter? You know, I'm going to tell you who's going to lead the charge against Big Pharma. It's going to be people who have encountered a chronic condition in their life. I don't know if you know I had Lyme disease in the past. Um, I think once you have Lyme disease, you kind of always have it lingering in your body. But I got a late stage diagnosis of that. My symptoms were crazy. Anyone out there who's listening who's had Lyme disease is like, I've been there. I know they're like, yes, because it's it's discredited. You know, a lot of a lot of pharmaceutical companies tell you, oh, you have Lyme disease? What I got told, here, take two weeks of antibiotics, you're done. I was, I had, I had massive vertigo. I had tingling and numbness in my cheek. At one point I was like, did I have a stroke? I couldn't walk a straight line from point A to point B. Wow. I was deathly sick, muscle spasms, muscle aches, chills, uh, temperature deregulation. I mean, the, the symptoms were endless. Mm. I fixed it. I didn't fix it through Big Pharma because Big Pharma told me, oh, this is the condition. These are the treatments. End of story. See you later. If, if, if you still have symptoms, it's just inflammation. That's what I got told. I went through holistic doctors. I went through an individualized yeah. approach. I spoke to physicians who wanted to talk to me about what was actually happening, and I fixed it. So anyone who suffered with that, and we know with this vaccine, there are a lot of groups of people who there's no clinical trials on them, autoimmune issues, this, that, and the other thing. Those people are just saying, some of them are saying, I'm open to the vaccination, but just I need more data. Others of them are saying, my doctor is saying he's seeing X, Y, and Z and people like me, so I'm hesitant. Others are saying, I had COVID already. I was fine after two days. I don't want to do this because I have a proclivity toward X, Y, and Z. So in a world where there needs to be, you know, you talk about empathy and compassion with COVID. You should have empathy for people who lost their lives. You should have empathy for people who lost loved ones. You can do that, but at the same time, can you have some empathy for people who don't fit inside your one-size-fits-all bucket and people who are looking at their own health and saying, this is, has been advised to be potentially hazardous for me, and I'm healthy, and I'm fine. So can you do you, protect yourself, mm -hmm. and let me worry about me? Yeah. That's scary that those people, where are all, where's the voice for all those people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. know? you know, again, so, so uh, uh, where this goes to, and appreciate you for sharing that. Obviously, that's a personal story. But, you know, uh, this goes to one thing. This is why I trust capitalism. I just trust capitalism. Spotify is ruining everything. For Silicon Valley, Spotify so is so far, pissing yeah. these people off. Yep. Spotify is making YouTubers, people who watch YouTube, I, my number one app is YouTube. It's my favorite app. I love the app YouTube. It's got a lot of potential to change the world. It's changed the world in many ways, mm -hmm. education, all these other things. But to me, Spotify is, I can guarantee in their board meetings right now, the name Spotify comes up regularly. It comes up in Google. It comes up in YouTube. It comes yeah. up in Facebook. It comes up in e Twitter. It comes up in every one of those conversations. They are all talking about this one company in Sweden called Spotify because capitalism works. I'll give you a perfect example. I go to the airport. Okay. Are you, are you TSA pre? Are you clear? And are you also clear? I'm are not you, clear because are, I don't fly that much. Are you clear or no? Are you TSA pre? You're just TSA pre. Okay. So, so check this out. So I'm TSA pre and I'm clear and I go to the airport. TSA pre. Hey, yeah, hey, kid, put your mask on. I'm like, oh, shit, sorry. Why don't I put the mask on. Because <laughs> like, I forget in Florida. Like, literally, I forget every time people have to tell me. Clear will say, hey, do you mind putting a mask on? Do you need one? We have a clear mask we can give you. Here we go. We'll give it to you. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Perfect reason why capitalism works. TSA pre, public company, government organization, okay? Mm -hmm. Clear, private company, okay? They have to serve you. They have to service you or else mm -hmm. they don't get business. Right. 
TSA Pre, if you tell a TSA Pre employee, what did you say? I'm going to write a negative review on Yelp about TSA <laughs> Pre in Dallas. Good luck. Fort Worth. They're gonna say, I don't give a shit. Right. Tell her clear. What's your name, Johnny? No problem. I'm going to write a negative review and I'm going to send an email. Oh, please. So what can I do to make it better? I'm so sorry. This has been a terrible experience. Let me make it better for you. What mm-hmm. can I do? That's capitalism. Capitalism is about serving you and the government organizations are like, you better listen to me because you don't have an alternative. Okay? Mm-hmm. The other day, Jen, we're going through... I don't know where we're going. Where were we last week? I don't even know where we were. Anyways, we're going somewhere, and Jennifer's got the milk because you know she, baby's still six months, so she's still going through Aww. the phase of uh, you know, the the all the machines that she's got to travel with. <laughs> yeah. But she has the milk, and she puts it through. And the guy's standing there, and it's been ten minutes. I'm like, I got a flight. Says, excuse me, is, is there any way you can? Uh, how soon can you guys take a look at Jen's back? Wait, we'll let you know. And walks off. I'm like, dude, I'd love to slap you upside the head right now. <laughs> yeah. But if I do, I'm going to jail if I do that because right. you can't do that, right? That's not customer service. Mm-hmm. Let me get with you in a minute. Let me see what I can. Let me see if I can get somebody. That's TSA. So mm-hmm. trust capitalism, man. Long term, as long as capitalism is this core system where people can compete in the marketplace, product prices will go lower. Mm-hmm. Products will improve. Websites will get better. Experiences will get better. Customer service will get better. Customer experience in every possible way. Capitalism can help make your life better because they have to compete. Think the, about they, what these guys don't compete is when those things don't get better. I'm listening to what you're saying, and I 100% agree, but my mind immediately goes to schools because you have kids all around the country suffering in schools that don't work. And every time someone suggests vouchers, every time someone suggests mm-hmm. charters, every, every time someone suggests turning – you know, bringing the free market into the educational system and and doing something, actually doing something about that. Democrats come back and say, well, no, it's just more funding that we need. In the meantime, we've been giving funding to, to schools for so long, more and more and more money, and it doesn't produce this results. This was the whole thing with Betsy DeVos, right? That's exactly I mean, right. she got vilified. If you watched anything on yes. the left, you think that she's the most evil person ever. She's, she was about school vouchers, and that's essentially freedom. capitalism, See, right? See, the reason, you know, you asked me in the beginning if this was my hill to die on the vaccines, and I said, mm-hmm. it's not about vaccines for me. It's about freedom. It's about empowering yeah. people. It's about you have a kid and you have one school in your district and that school is failing and you want the opportunity to take your child into a better school system, into a better school, and you can't do that. I want to empower that family to be able to do that. I want to force those bad schools to perform better by having to compete with a really good school that now kids are flocking to. And again, the reason people on the left often oppose all of these things is because it removes power from government mm-hmm. and it removes power of government over you you. Government then can no longer tell you what school you put your kid into. And once people realize that they don't need government for those things, that they can rely on themselves, that they have some freedom in society, they can build their own lives, that they get to keep more of their hard-earned cash, all of those things, government becomes less and less powerful, less and less needed. And the politicians that are espousing big government lose favor with the public. So the whole system is broken because of a lack of freedom. So I was talking education because I came out of education in television first. Now I'm talking about vaccines. I could be talking about anything, but what I'm really talking about is freedom. That is a hill I will die on more so now because I have a two-year-old and I'm increasingly worried about the world that he's coming into. I want him to be a free thinker. I want him to live freely. I want him to be able to build the life he wants for himself and make his own choices for his own health and his own family. And I want people who are going to be an obstacle to that to be voted out of office and to get out of of his way. So he has given me a great sense of, of, of um, motivation and power at this time. And I just think of his face and I'm like, this, this is worth fighting for. <laughs> respect. So. Respect you for doing that. Respect you for doing that. Uh, a couple things before we wrap yes. up. One, uh, Megan McCain. Okay. So Megan McCain, uh, uh, she also is no longer with them. She That's was right. going through some challenges and she had, she, I think she openly talked about the fact that she had a mental breakdown while she was pregnant, I don't know what it was. There was something she yeah. went through yeah. that she's like, man, I just can't handle this. This was mm, like, I, I'm much. worried about my, the risk for my kids, all these other people, all these other things. Who would you say if you or Megan, because Megan can't stand Trump. Like that's the right. ideal person yeah. for view. You know, you right. want somebody like that. And you call Trump a third grader for calling out Chris Wallace or whatever it was. And then you said, if Obama went through it, you didn't say anything. You know, th- yeah. that whole thing you talked about. Who do you think could work for The View? Is there a name or two or three that you would say? No, I think think it has to be someone that... I think they're going to wind up probably hiring someone who hates Trump. But you can't just hate Trump. Like, yeah, you know, Meghan McCain personally... She and her family have issues with the Trumps, and she's been very public about that. But I don't see her as someone who wouldn't give credit to a policy if it was due. That's no good. You have to hate Trump across the board. That means everything he does is wrong, everything. I think they'll probably wind up hiring someone who works for a CNN 
or, you know, a, 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 a company that, you know, liberals like to see conservatives. Oh, well, they're legit. They work for CNN. So there's can't one be name crazy. that came to mind that's on CNN. That's exactly who I thought of. That's the girl with the initials. It's oh, not I know. Anna Essie? Navarro, is it? Not Anna Navarro. Essie? She's the- Essie Cup. So I know Essie yeah. um, pretty well. It's possible. I think you... She's I think, a conservative, but she's on CNN and I think she's definitely going, not a traditional liberal I at all. I think they're, up, they're going to probably... You'll know probably, her with the glasses. Bless you. They're going to find someone who agrees with them most of the time, mm-hmm. disagrees politely, and on the key issues... S-E, remember, the there are key issues that liberals prioritize, okay? So there's key... right? You know, Trump... The uh, Jan- what happened on January 6th. Right mm-hmm. now, these are hot issues. Um, there's issues about race that you can't ask questions, you know, critical race theory or you, you, the, the, there ha- the conservative they pick. And I say that in quotation marks has to fall in line on those key issues. Mm-hmm. They can talk about low taxes. They can quietly disagree that maybe Kamala Harris isn't a great candidate, but it mm-hmm. has to be in a way that doesn't disrupt the narrative. It has to be a way that if there are these key issues that they're preserved and that the audience mm-hmm. walks away feeling like, oh, this is the right, th- okay, well, they disagree. This is the right way of seeing things. Anything that threatens that is going to be a problem. But Jed, this goes back to my initial question. This is sort of essentially what Pat was basically describing with the you know, the, the, the socialist Democrats and basically the Tea Party movement. Why does it have to be one unicorn person that hates you? Like, why can't you have a MAGA person, a, a rhino, a, well, I'll t- I'll uh, a Liz why. Cheney, and then have a couple, like, why have to, have to because have it's scary. find one person? Because it's terrifying that the audience would walk away and actually be thinking why when, is I, that when scary, I left though? the view when I left the view I will tell you I got so many messages from people who said I disagree with you but you made me think mm-hmm. I disagree with you but you changed my perception about what a conservative is I yeah. disagree with you but I don't know maybe I th- think about this this and this a little bit differently now that is terrifying to a liberal establishment old school network that has a goal. There is an agenda. You don't see anything clearly to you realize there is an agenda here. What's sure. the agenda? And the agenda is to have someone on there that you can claim a diversity of thought label on, but actually not prevent present diversity of thought to the mm. audience. So it's a claim and you know it's, it's a facade is what you're saying. It's a facade, one hundred percent. Um, and if you do get somebody on there like me, I, I think Megan, you know, stood firm on conservative principles in many mm-hmm. ways. I think that it presents a problem. It presents, mm-hmm. Sometimes it presents behind the scenes problem. That was not the case with me. Seems to be that that was the case with her, that she was sensing from some friction Abby there. What about Abby Huntsman? Abby's very neutral. Abby and I have been in similar jobs. I don't know if you know, Abby hosted Fox and Friends Weekend before I did. But yeah. Abby's very... Um, She's she's kind of neutral. She wants to see both sides. Her brand is very much like, let's come together. What's wrong with uh, that, though? I don't see not enough fireworks. Right. See, the challenge is you no. want fireworks, yeah. but you mm-hmm. almost want somebody like I think their ideal candidate would be somebody that created fireworks, but the audience didn't like. Didn't or did like? Didn't. Didn't like. Didn't like because they're unconvincing men. <laughs> I, I got they're one. They're unconvincing. You need to be unconvincing. You need unconvincing. to be unconvincing. Yes, because if you're a convincing conservative, you have compelled oh people to gosh. think. Let me tell you, I have I one name. I don't know what the hell that means. Well, I have a name that if if this yeah. person was on there, I think it'd be like the top show competing with everybody. If Kellyanne Conway was <laughs> on the view. That would be fun. She's been yeah. on there before. Yeah, but I'm talking guest. about I'm talking about if Kellyanne Conway came out and said yeah. she signed a one year contract to be on the view, it'd be fireworks. It'd mm-hmm. be so uncomfortable for I can just imagine Joy's yeah. face. How disturbing it would be, but that to me is television. Yeah, that's, she's that's, not interested. Maybe Kellyanne Conway's daughter. Daughter is, would be, uh, but, but she yeah. would be. You see what's going on with those two? She or, would yeah. be very. I do. I do. Uh, she would be very supportive. And another person, by the way, recently, apparently Ted Cruz is. Uh, yes. Uh, it was it one of his kids, one twelve of his kids year old on TikTok. That, yeah, mm-hmm. and and also not what supportive. Was the kid? Was, also not supportive. What about uh, Ted Cruz's ugly wife? You're saying that because of what Trump said. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, you know. I'm just making that clear, clearing yeah, that course. path for you. Yeah, yeah well, I of think what Trump everyone said. knows. Yeah. yeah, and that goes to show you too. <laughs> hey, like, Ted, <laughs> your wife's ugly, and your dad killed JFK. Oh my Do I have your God. vote? Yes, sir, Mr. Trump. Thank you. All right. Ted Cruz lost a lot of support after that <laughs> because they were me? like, "What? Who are you? What do you stand for exactly?" So Sham. yeah, of course, that's politicians. Though again, I always tell people, don't pledge allegiance to politicians; they will disappoint you. Pledge hey, allegiance if to principles, and you will win. There's anything that I took from this was a lot, and I think obviously she's awesome, is not the allegiance to any political party or any, any political That's right. person. Just do you, and you can you can agree and disagree, and uh, it's an issue thing. Mm-hmm. What a lady we got, right? What here, a lady man. we got. What a I lady. hope you guys have had fun. Yeah. Yes. This, <laughs> I've had fun. This was great. So tell us tell us about uh, Bila.locals.com. 
Yeah, so I got tired of social media censorship. You see what's been happening on Twitter in particular. People are getting banned. Malone was banned. Everyone's getting banned for this and that. I've had numerous friends that have just been reporting facts that get banned. Then, of course, when the CDC comes out and supports it, we're like, oh, is that not misinformation? What's going on here? So there's a place called Locals that I, you know, I spoke to their reps over there. And I said, you know what? I want to create a censorship-free zone where I can talk to people, where I can share information, where they can share information with me, where I don't have to worry that, you know, Big Brother Silicon Valley is looking looking over my shoulder with their agenda-driven nonsense. So it's just a free sh free exchange of ideas. It's something that should be happening in a free society everywhere. I invite people to ask questions. I'm going to be giving behind-the-scenes looks at some projects that are coming up there. I'm going to probably post a clip from us talking today over there if you guys give me one. And it's just a space where people feel like they can be free-thinking people. And it's a conversation. It's, it's what you know, social media promised and didn't deliver. So it's Beela.locals.com. Um, there's going to be some family stuff. It's not all politics. It's going to be, you know, culture, media. It's going to be family. It's going to be value-based. Some stuff about my book, Dear Hartley, and what I hope for the next generation. But more than that, it's just going to be a space where people feel like they can be themselves and they can ask things. And I'm not going to criminalize them for asking a question. You know what's no gotten a, a bad name or rep these days is the the, the word free thinkers right like the word free thinker has now been hijacked like oh you're a free thinker i don't know about this guy he's thinking we're it's himself it's very it's dangerous very weird right what's it's the opposite dangerous. of free thinking though boxed in i don't know what, what's the what's the word you got in mind? I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. you you speak english better than i do i'm so i'm, I'm, I'm the immigrant. loyalist it's a loyalist, loyalist? There's, there are loyalists in loyalist? media is that blind, the number? blind thinking blind, yeah. blind thinker blind and, and faith? listen it, blind. it happens on the right too it happens on the right, too. Sure. There's people on the Again, right the who... Again, the 4744. I've mm -hmm. taken heat at ABC. I've taken heat, you yeah. know, Fox News. I've taken heat for just being someone who isn't willing to tell a line. And there's, you know what the thing is that's frustrating is what I'm doing is reflective of the, of the average person out there. People mm -hmm. don't just have those loyalties. They ask questions. They sit around the dinner table. They agree. Right. They disagree. They're not living in that D.C. bubble of right. that media elite. That's, they care about well, real Well, if you only watch the media, you think Americans hate each other. I mean, look at this office right here. We've got left, right, center, gay, straight, brown, black, white. Right. Like, we're, we, everyone gets along. There's right. another guy on the podcast, Gerard, shout out to him. People think we're freaking enemies. We went to lunch yesterday. Like, we hang out, we're buddies. Right. It's not right. that serious, but the, the media basically portrays it's left, it's right, it's Trump, it's Biden, pick a side, wrestling match, right. you know, pay-per-view. AOC, Candace Owens, let's fight it out. I'd like to see that, by the way. And, that I mean, would be fascinating. You might even want to be uh, <laughs> coming off the top rope. Maybe I can, <laughs> can I moderate that? I'll moderate it. I don't it. feel like you're going to be moderate at all. I feel like you're jumping in. I can in moderate it. You're like coming can... in with the people's elbow, <laughs> That's Jed. true. I'll have elbow pads on, hopefully. Well, but um, This yeah. was a blast. This was Thank a blast. You, Patrick, Thank you, Patrick, for, for this free up. exchange of ideas. Yes. Uh. Yeah, really enjoyed it. And I know your next move is between uh, uh, Florida Texas, and Texas and Florida. Uh, 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 Florida, long, if you're like lifestyle, if you're like no taxes, Here's the pitch, if you by the really way. want the a yeah. low regulation with a governor that could potentially end up being the president of yeah. the United States, and you are eight hours away from Europe if you want to go on vacation, mm -hmm. you're an hour away from all the Caribbean, all the Baha all that mm -hmm. stuff, you're 45 minutes to from Cuba if you want to go to Cuba, he yeah. loves Cuba. If you want it, to go down to South Beach, I know a couple places that we can yeah, go hang so, out. So, <laughs> your husband will like it. You've yeah. got a great tan. Do you like being tan or do you like being pale? Which I don't one even you? really have a tan. I'm Italian, though, so I come exactly. naturally. Do you, do you like to say, lay out in the bit, sun? A little do you bit. Do you like the beach? I like do you my like vitamin the ocean? D. I like my vitamin D. Well, you know? Texas might not be for you, Jay. I don't know. <laughs> Going to have to feel it out. Yeah. Either way, I will be leaving the bad dystopian novel that is New York City. Wow. And either either Texas or Florida will be a, gr a vast improvement. Let me ask you York. one question yeah. about New York City before we go. I ask this to a lot of New Yorkers because yeah. I don't know if you've heard. They're moving down here in droves. Oh, I've heard. Um... I say, you know, scale of one to 10, 10 being New York City at its full go system, energy, everything's amazing. One being like just full lockdown, shutdown. Where is New York City right now as of January of 2022? It's at like a, it's, it's at like a four, but it's, it's, it's open, but, but people have left and everyone's mm. walking around looking hypnotized like a Stafford wife. Like that, that mass formation psychosis is real. <laughs> go to, you know what? You think it's made up? 
do me a favor, go to Manhattan for a weekend, and then come tell me what you think. I used Everyone's, to go every summer for a month. I and and I'm saying years. this as someone who grew up in New York, who yeah. had great experiences in New York, who wants New York to come back, who loves the, 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 the way New York used to be. It was rebellious. It was edgy. It questioned authority. It was cool. Mm -hmm. It's none of those things. They're hypnotized. People are hypnotized. Dang. And they are government loyalists at this point. And they're, and they're living in, in fear, in Can horrible, they get crippling out of that? fear. How are they going to get out of that? They're going to get out of it when the city sinks goes underwater mm -hmm. and then they finally realize that the stuff they've been voting for is the reason that it sinks and they start voting differently. If that doesn't happen, it's going to stay underwater. Damn. Jedediah, you to bomb. Stay Thank display, you. Keep kicking next ass. Listen, next time I come in here, I expect the money to be in No, we'll, we'll have, a, we'll have a stack for you right in front of you. We'll have that. Okay, folks, I take on go the... to bila.locals.com and uh, she's all over Twitter and very active. Send her a tweet. And uh, she will generally respond. I see how active she is on Twitter. Good awesome. having you on. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. having me. I appreciate it. Yep.